recording. Oh, I see. We got to go live. Oh, I, I see what I did. I forgot to hit the auto start and the auto stop thing. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, like I said, there I, it goes. There it goes. Me, yeah, like I said, I totally redid this whole thing. Oh, I see. <coughs> there you go. Now you're getting commercials. All right, good deal. We're we're good now. All right, so we are live. Yay! Tonight we're going to be talking about trikes and light trikes. We got a lot of people here, and I think that I hear some noise that might be Jim. Is it Jim? Is he um probably because he's driving. He's driving. Hey Jim, I'm going to meet you, buddy. So I muted. Him. Yeah, there, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and. Do all right. We are live. Yay. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Simons. Welcome to ClearProp TV. This is episode 157, season four, four years of doing this. And here we are with a big panel. We got a lot of people here. Uh, we're going to be talking about trikes and light trikes because, hey, that's the rave, right? Everyone loves to trike now. Uh, we got Brooke Sheffield. He is going to be talking about his dealing with trikes and we also got doug martin in the house and myself too we got some trikes here we're going to be talking about but let's go ahead and say hello to everybody real quick we got paramime usa she does have her pom-poms where's your pom-poms <laughs> all right there you go and you're on mute if you want to say something she goes sorry no. i do that every time <laughs> <laughs> well i never know what which order you're going to go in so i just wait patiently for my name but hello everybody yes welcome to monday night it's Monday night, got the pom-poms. It's gonna be a big, huge night because we got Brooke in the house. It's really exciting. So you guys all have to stay here, stay in the chat. We've got so much to talk about tonight. Trikes and trikes and more trikes. My yeah, favorite. and that's right, you were on a trike so you can even talk about your trike thing. Yeah. Yeah. I get well, to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> See the smile on her face. She loves trikes also. So we'll definitely I can't wait till May. <laughs> we're going to be definitely talking about your trike uh, tandem, which <laughs> was fun for you. We also got Will Fly from Will Fly PPG. I hear a little something in the background. Do you guys hear that or no? A little bit. Yeah, right. Maybe a little bit. I don't know what it is. <laughs> is it Will's fan club? It must be Will's fan club. <laughs> So yeah, we'll we'll fly on. from will fly ppg welcome buddy hey thanks yeah i think you do that on purpose you mix up you mix the order up to keep us kind of on our toes and you know so we don't get comfy well definitely not you know and the thing is too when we got on here i i just go from left to right down the down the thing so everybody just pops in the in in the windows here a little bit different so will fly um you haven't done trikes at all I've never done a trike. Um, I am interested to the extent I, you know, maybe be interested in a retractor trike and give that a try, kind of dip my toe in the water, but uh, I'm not ready to give up foot launch yet. I just, oh, I just still love it. Not talking about giving up at all, Brooke. I know, but I'm afraid I'm going to like it and then I'm not going to want to go back. <laughs> like, like Brian Waller, right? Brian like Waller, Waller got that yeah. retractor trike and he never unbolts that darn thing anymore. He just flies with it to a trike. <laughs> yeah, it's all over once I get that trike. I know it is. It is fun. I, I think me personally, I like the trike because, you know, you can foot launch in the morning and then midday, if it's too windy, you can put on your trike and now you're, uh, you know, drive around on a little three wheeler. How fun is that? Right. So, you know, I admit it's I, got the cool factor. It does. It really does. We also got Scuba Steve in the house. What's up, Mr. Scuba Steve, as you're taking a How drink? You doing? I caught I that up. perfectly, didn't I? I know. Yeah, I was just about. Oh, you stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Scuba Steve? How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. It's going to be fun tonight. We get to talk about trikes and the mini trikes that you have over there, besides what Brooke has, and um, we'll, we'll just have to see. That's going to be really fun. So you're going to be in the background and asking questions like you normally do. We definitely appreciate you. Um, we're also going to be doing the spinning wheel winning things. You want to make sure that you do that, Mr. Will? Excellent. Thank you very much. And we also got uh, Ryan, Ryan rides in the house. What's up, buddy? Haven't seen you in a minute. How's it going, guys? Yeah, I was down in Florida doing some uh, drone flights, doing some sales. So uh, just trying to keep get business booming for us. We definitely need to work with you again, have you as a guest, because your drone things are amazing. If you guys don't know, uh, Ryan has, you know, hundreds of different drones that are all connected. They go up and they do things all together. It's just absolutely amazing. So we're going to have to come back with you and get you on the show again. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. 
Absolutely. We also got Doug Martin in the house, man. Yeah, I think you've been here like almost every single year. How you doing, buddy? Good, buddy. How are you doing? Absolutely amazing. I saw your post on Facebook about your trike. So Oh, yeah, I've got more than my share of experience and lots of different <laughs> light trikes. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I built I have uh ended up with another one from a buddy uh on a Blackhawk frame and then I got the one I just built also. And I love my light trike. So, yes. was for and I'm glad that we said light trike and trike, trike buggies. There's so many different terminologies. We definitely need to talk more about that. We also got Brooke Shuffle in the house, also known as PPG Pirate. Uh, Arr, you know, why, why, why is he always mad? Because he just are. <laughs> and uh, you, you run a school and you mostly do uh, trikes and stuff too, too down there, right, Brooke? <clears throat> we, we do full foot launch and trikes. Um, We've just recently expanded our offerings and we're now doing tandem certifications. Uh, but yeah, we, we do a little bit of all of it. Um, we believe that foot launch is awesome, but to really be accessible to people of all ages and all capabilities, um, you've got to bring those wheels in. So we do it all. I like that. Bring the wheels in like a retractor track. That's pretty awesome. All right. So guys, tonight we're going to be just talking about trikes. Um, it looks like we got a question already, Will. Do you want to go ahead and ask that? Yeah, Matt Sloper, uh, he wants to know if you can launch a trike in six to 10 mile per hour winds. 100%. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No problem. So is there, is there, uh, okay. So the, you're actually, the limit is greater, right? With a trike than it would be foot launch or no. what's the difference? No. There's a lot of differences there. And there's really not one answer that fits the bill. Because we have to look at each situation. We have to look at the equipment that's being used. Because let's say you've got a 10 mile an hour wind and you've got a light trike with two light passengers and you've got a 42 meter wing. That could be challenging because as the wing comes up, there could be a lot of drag and there not be, not, might not be enough weight underneath to basically allow that wing standard control. But at the same time, you could take the same conditions, roll out a heavy trike, that weighs 250 pounds, put two 200 pound guys in it, and you could pull a 42 meter wing up with no problem and no threat of rollover or turtle at all. So um, it has to do with skill set, it has to do with conditions, it has to do with equipment, overall weight. Um, but ultimately, the trike can basically do almost anything that the foot launch can do. I do think there is a cutoff to where some trikes just can never access that reverse launch that's necessary for extremely high wind. But, um, you know, you say it can't be done and I'm sure there's a pilot out there that can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll try. <laughs> Absolutely. And and the thing is, you know, you can, with a, with a light trike, and when we talk about the light trikes, what we're talking about are these type of trikes here that um, just come together uh, and bolt onto your regular thing. Like this right here is a Kangoo. It's a trike right here. We got the retracted trike right here that actually retracts and stuff like that and these are really super light they're only like maybe what 20 30 pounds you know at the max and they're nice and tight which means that if you want to do a reverse you clip in you do a reverse and now you just stand up turn your thing around or you can even um go uh, uh give it some gas and actually turn around and go into the wind. So, I mean, the, the, the light trikes are amazing. You can't do that with, well, I don't know, Brooke, can you do that with the big um, heavy trikes? Do a reverse? Or you um, have to It's not something me. that I'm trying. It's not something that I'm really recommending. Um, I believe that there's just a higher risk of rollover and equipment damage. And for me, when that trike costs $20,000 plus, the, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So you're saying that with a big 250 pound trike that's designed for tandems or just, you know, even solo. I mean, you got those big ones out there that even if you have a high wind, what's the maximum wind that you would actually try to launch when those 250 pound big trikes? In? So um, I spent a lot of time doing uh, high wind launching down in Lake Wales, Florida, um, because we don't get a lot of high winds here in the mountains. But when we do, it's just not flyable for rotor. Um, so when I was down in Lake Wales, um, a right around nine or 10 miles an hour was my cutoff and I'm 220. My machine is over 270 and my passengers were around 200 and I still felt like I wouldn't want to take much more. So about 
10 miles an hour is my cutoff. If it's gusting any more than that, I'm probably not going to do it. I I definitely agree. I'm I'm pretty much the same way. It's like if I can't foot launch in that wind, I'm definitely not going to trike in the wind. Actually, the trike I think is more fun when you have nil wind in the morning because, you know, it's it's hard to do a forward inflation with a foot launch sometimes. Um Doug, you do a lot of triking. You've been doing triking for a couple of years. You also got your your tandem, right? Your tandem exemption and you've been taking yeah. people up. Uh, what kind of trikes do you have and what are your wind, um, I guess, window that you would fly in? Realistically, 8 to 10 is probably my limit. If it's gusting more than 12, I'm staying on the ground. Um, if I'm launching into the wind, then if I have to do a forward launch, probably 6 to 8 miles an hour. If I do a reverse launch, maybe 10, 12 miles an hour um the big trike and the big wing uh i probably won't fly that if we have more than eight mile an hour but the big trike is a zenit uh cosmos and then i've got a retractor trike and then i've got a light trike that i built and i've got a black hawk light trike in the barn that i haven't had a chance to fly yet excellent so what do you think about um the big tandem trikes that you uh, fly is that does that feel nice and sturdy and solid and you have no problems with the big tandems i really do like my big tandem trike um if i'm flying a tandem passenger the wing is so much bigger you really have to plan ahead and be careful and you have a passenger you have to be careful so my weight or sorry my wind tolerance is a little bit wider just myself but um yeah the big trikes are they're kind of planted to the ground as long as you can you know keep it sort of into the wind you're fine okay yeah my my favorite so far just a light trike so what's the difference between a light trike a fully uh, just a full trike because a light, okay so a light trike is when you normally have your foot launch paramotor that bolts onto a light trike is that what you think, um, guys? I, I would think so. I'd say any trike under about 30 pounds okay. kind of works out to be that way. There and are definitely some trikes out there that you can put a foot launch paramotor on that are not light trikes. For right. instance, the Flash Cruiser and the um, the Kite Buggy. But, yeah, I would, I would agree. Typically, if you can attach a paramotor to it, it's in the lightest category. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the, it's kind of a harness. If the paramotor has a harness and you take it off your foot launch unit to put it on the back, that's not really a light trike anymore. If you're using your harness and your main rig, yeah, I can I can see that. No. Okay. So for you for those of you that don't understand or may not know what Doug was just talking about, there are some trikes that actually come with roll bars and they come with a, a, a seat and you put your paramotor on your motor itself, but you got to take off that particular harness right. to connect it to it. So there's, so I, I like to kind of figure out what this terminology is, you know, so light trike is something you bolt on that's about 30 pounds or under that you use your same harness on. And then the ones that we just talked about, like um, the bigger ones that you put on the back of one that already has a cage and already has, you know, the roll bar and a, uh, a, a harness, what would we call those? I call them conversion trikes because the mm -hmm. foot launch is converting to the trike. So I just call them conversions. Conversion that, would, that would sound realistic. Okay. And then the regular main trikes that are just fully 100% trikes all the time. Nothing comes off. It's it's all one piece. What do we call those? Do we call those uh, paratrikes? Or what, I call what them dedicated trikes. Dedicated trikes. I just and typically it. I call that a dedicated um, fixed hang point trike. Yeah, I would say a big that's just what point. I say. But um, I call it Big Ben, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if it's got a fixed high hang point and fixed in harnesses, then yeah, you're dealing with a a large a large strike. Okay. So, because there are so many different terminology, and what's a trike buggy? What is that? What is that considered? Is that considered like a, a full-size trike to you guys? 
I would kind of think that it's a, a lighter. What's that? Which which one are you talking about? Uh, if like there's different terminology out there, you've heard um, light trike, uh, bolt on trikes, um, um, dedicated trikes, so, you know, the the big trikes. I mean, what are they, you know, where do they go from light to medium or what do you call these different uh, types of trikes out there? Because there's so many different types of terminology, you know, so a light trike is that different from, you know, a medium trike that's connected to a bolt trike or maybe, you know, a retracted trike. You hear so many different things. So what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people out there that are into just trikes. They have no idea or they've never flown a light trike that you can bolt onto a, a free flight or not a free flight, but a, a foot launch. And, then and you they've have, got those too. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So there's so many different uh, terminology. So I guess what I'm asking is you guys in the super chat, um, what do you call these different types of trikes? You got that light trike, there's a medium trike that you bolt on the, the your your foot launch, but you take off the harness because this one already has a harness, then you got your full big setups. What do you guys call them or do you not care? Um, I think we got a couple of questions in the super chat, uh, Mr. Will. What do you call them or do you not care? Okay, so Matt Sloper is, uh, no, we already got that one. Let's see, Brian Franz is asking, has anyone flown a flight? Looks cool, but heavy. I don't I have that. That's Brooke, one I have not heard of. Brooke? I haven't either. No? Okay. And then Bonnie Franz wants to know what trikes can take different paramotors. So, uh, yeah, so I'm... That's actually a good question. I mean, like the retracted trike, you can have, you can go on different paramotors, right? You know, but it won't just fit a few. All paramotors, it? Yeah, and you have a different mount plate for it. Yeah. Is a flight one of those? Remember those? Uh, well, I've seen a video. It's like a dune buggy with a fan on the back, and they took out. It looks like a really heavy car. Is that what the flight is? I think. I don't know. Is yeah. it like a flying bike? Yeah, yeah. it sounds like a bicycle. James asked about something that was really cool the other night. Um, I don't know if that was on uh, this show or not, but man, that thing was awesome. But it was extremely expensive. I don't know. Maybe it was Parajet's version, but that was a quad, I think. Oh, the flying know. car? No. Well, it, it was, I mean, if you said the name, I'd say, yeah, that's it. Parajet makes a flying car. It's pretty cool. Really? Oh, yeah. It's a dune buggy, and then it can take off and fly. Okay, well, this thing looked like a Doom Buggy, but I don't think it was Parajet. And it was a different name. Um, I've seen those too, and they look really heavy, like they're not um, FAR 103. They're probably, you know, uh, a sport license because they look like they're much heavier. Yeah, maybe. Maybe so. Um, the Parajet one is a PPC, technically. I just looked up the Flyke. Yeah. It's, think, uh, think motorcycle meets drone. It's got three different uh props and there's like a motor you sit on it like a motorcycle in the middle oh um can you uh share that on the uh, screen <clears throat> uh mm. man yeah, give me, give, give me give a me second. number of drones i've crashed in my life <laughs> i don't know that's not a good idea for me all those dgi uh, it's really difficult to catch the uh, crash some of those new ones now that have all those sensors there we go oh challenge accepted oh is this what you're talking about Nope, that's not what I'm talking about. Hang on a second. That's the flake. That, that, that is a flake. Yeah. Oh, that is a flake. See, I'm okay. getting something different. Can you zoom in on the actual trike thing there, Will, or does that not allow you to zoom in? That doesn't do it, does it? It no, definitely don't. looks like they're just able to attach the regular fresh breeze motor on the back. Let's see what I can... Yeah. So this is one that... So this would be the middle type of trike that we were talking about, where you would have to put on a motor on the back. Can you show it again real quick? Yeah, I'm going to pull up. That's a, that's a recumbent motor. bike with a motor on the back. That's exactly yeah, what much. that is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, there we go. That's nice. That's oh, right. that's, that's nice. cool. So that has the, uh, the seat that's already, that I, I assume that that seat is part of it. And then the motor itself, the paramotor part in the back, would bolt onto it so you can pedal it what the hell it's got pedals in the front oh my god yeah. it does 
Let's yeah, go. It's a, yeah, there's pedals in the front. <laughs> yeah, at, at the Highland Fly is in, there was Get up one the of speed. those. <laughs> well, so I wonder if that's something that you could actually, you know, uh, bike yourself down. Can you show the uh, front end, uh, Will? Can you zoom to that front end so we can see the pedals? Is that allowed to do that? No. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll make it happen here. Okay. Dude, the thing that gets me on that design quality. is the floating swing arms. Now, I don't see pedals. Where are the pedals? Yeah, right at the very top, or really. Yeah, you don't. See, yeah, see the pedals, the chain it runs down to yeah. the wheel. I mean, it's it's got oh, a it four does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I wonder if that's to like pedal yourself, you know, when there's people around to get your trike someplace. You when know, when the cops are looking, you pedal. <laughs> 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 so at at the Howland fly-in last summer, there was one very similar. I don't know if it's that one for sure, but it was just like that. It had a pedal set in the front, and he would just sit in the trike, pedal himself out into the field, set everything up, start everything up, and then fly from there. So um, that might not have been that brand, but I'm like, holy cow, that thing's got freaking pedals on it. Well, you know that you can put those. Um, be, you can you can get a bicycle conversion kit to make it an e-bike, and it's just a hub that you put on the wheels. So there shouldn't be any reason why we can't put one of those hubs on one of these trikes to be able to you know tool it around without the motor going. I like that. Yeah, we we should be able to. I mean, and I, Doug, Doug, you make your own trikes. I made the last one, and. Uh, the electric motor is a good idea because, um, in all honesty, I'm one of those guys that just gets in his trike, goes down the driveway, goes down the road a mile to my landing, to my, my LZ, and prop spinning, neighbors are waving. But realistically, it would be a better idea to do that without the prop spinning. Probably yeah. a, the campground would probably be a lot less upset when I drove <laughs> through without a big cloud of dust behind me. But, oh yeah, and mm -hmm. also maneuvering yourself uh, to to fly, like in a fly-in, and you got a bunch of people with their w with their wings laid out. That would be really good to be able to. Yep, I like it. Yeah. All right, really interesting. So, Brooke, what'd you call those that are half and half? Um, that's kind of like a conversion trike conversion where you can take trike. your foot launch unit and put it on the back. Okay, so light trike, conversion trike, and a full trike. Dedicated track. Dedicated track. There we go. I think the kite buggy yeah. is probably the only one I know in the U.S. that you can put any foot launch unit on the back. Which one? Kite buggy. Kite buggy. Um, they're also used for doing um, sand kiting, like riding these buggies in the desert with sand with bull. Yeah, um, I wonder if that's what it is, Brooke. I'm, I'm going to look that up. That might be what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what you're talking. That's what the Leers have. No, oh no, they got yeah the trike buggy. Tri yeah, trike buggy. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now the one that oh. I'm talking about, it's got like knobby wheels, and I mean it looks like it's built for off road. Yeah, the trike buggy is really just a light trike, and you're right, it takes just about anything we want for a trike. But uh, that I think that's under thirty five pounds, also. Oh no, it's way heavier than that. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's oh. it's closer to. I want to say 75 or 80 pounds, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I just rebuilt one for a student, put new axles on it. It's, it's pretty heavy. Maybe I'm thinking of something different, but I'm it really wasn't that all that big a trike. Feed. Maybe, yeah. I got a background blur different. on, so. What are you saying, Ryan? I'm sorry. No, he just muted himself. <laughs> sorry, my, my girlfriend was talking to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least she talks to you. <laughs> so just like we said earlier, in case you just jumped on, we have, what, 40 people watching right now. So we are going to be doing the spinning wheel of Winnie thing. So make sure that you uh, tag Will Fly and say that you are here. If you are just listening, you might want to be on that spinning wheel of Winnie things. I mean, why not? You got a chance of winning something. That's the whole idea of that's why we're on these shows, right? It's like nobody listens to us. They're like, eh, we're not listening to you. We just want to see if we can win that spinning wheel. It uh, looks like there's another, I can't read. I don't have my um, glasses. What does it say, Will? Yeah, there's uh, for Mad Sloper, and uh, he's asking why, you know, the motorcycles that have the two wheels in the front, the one wheel in the back, um, why there aren't 
uh, trikes like that. And I, I mean, I would think that would be kind of spooky on landing. That's why I don't I like quads so much. I mean, I'm taking uh, off and landing. You need two wheels on the back at least, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't Brooke, um, Doug, what do you think about uh, one wheel in the back and two in the front? It's Not the same reason why you don't take off nose heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So you need a wide wheelbase to create stability because we all know that we don't always get it exactly perfect every time. And you would have to be perfect every time to every degree to make it work with one wheel. So yeah. um, even the quads are, you know, I can see some benefit to quads, um, but a wide wheelbase is what I like to see. And um, I would say if you're considering a light trike that attaches to something easily, it's worth mentioning Parajet's new creation for the Maverick. They have a great trike that attaches to it, and the wheels reach out not only sideways pretty far, but they go back behind the motor. And yep. you won't see that on the Retracta and on the yep. Calibri and a lot of these other simpler trikes. And I think Parajet has really nailed the stability and still kept a light trike design. So worth mentioning that new design that's out there. Nice. Absolutely. Oh. And and also, too, you know, before you bolt on your trike, you might want to do a hang check because just like Brooks said and Doug, you know, and, and me, when you take off, you want that nose to come up first, at least 11, 12 inches first, and then the wheels. That way, when you come down, your back wheels hit and then the front, kind of like an airplane, you know. Can you yeah. imagine an airplane having one wheel in the back and two in the front? Well, that was one of the one of the really scary things that I saw. That Blackhawk that I have in my shop, uh, he bought that from a guy who shouldn't have been flying, <laughs> should not have been flying it. The harness is mounted way too low on the frame itself, but the trike, the front supports are still in the box. So when you fly, <clears throat> the front of the trike drops down in front of you. How he landed that with that front wheel three feet below him. I have no idea. So it's kind of like the reverse strike. The idea of landing on that one wheel dead perfect and not being sideways and then having the real wheels touch down perfect, that's not real likely to happen a lot. I agree. That's that's kind of different. That, that's kind of so yeah. so I'm I'm interested because the it seems like the quad would present a similar problem like on landing unless you nailed it just perfectly. You that's know, correct just yeah, spend more time on the rear wheels, wheels ripping, huh that's correct um a, a quad could catch as you're coming down if you don't catch it correctly and you hit one wheel first that's where you can start having problems that's why more people go to trikes than quads quads seem like they're stable and that'd be great to do to have like a little four wheel if all you're going to do is tool around on the ground quads are fun Right. But as soon as you start taking off and landing, you got to be really careful in that landing because you hit that one wheel a little bit off center. That's I mean, ideally, the rear axle is fixed. The front axle is floating and it doesn't have a lot of stiffness in it. And if a proper trike set down would be the rear wheels first, the front nose after and your feet aren't stiff and that front end settles into its tracking line. You don't force it into it. It's, it's just like when you watch a fixed wing airplane come in, it it finds its ground position with the wheels as long as you put it in the right place. Right. It's super crucial to have uh, have a stable wing over your head. You can't have any os oscillation at all because that's where things get squirrely. Yeah, exactly. especially if you're dealing with a high hang point or something like that. Yeah. It gets really squirrely. I'd say that's probably the biggest mistake you see um, trike pilots do is this whole concept of just – it's like that power parachute concept where they just cram it and go. And you see these guys doing the, like, the like uh, the Kurt Fister uh, takeoff where it's just all over the place. <laughs> so I think that's the biggest thing that trike, new trike pilots need to overcome is take off after you have a long, smooth taxi – that's under control. You can do all your safety checks and then you can hyper focus on the wing 80%, runway 20%, and then take off. But these guys that are just cramming it and leaving the ground and praying, 
it just scares the hell out of me. You and me both. There needs to be a lot more uh, when it comes to students, a lot more triking, you know, a lot more on the ground, a lot more taxiing with the wing above your head without even going. And while you're still on the ground, all you're doing is you're, you're, you can make figure eights because once you start going, you can go into the wind sideways with the wind. It doesn't make any bit of difference. You just got to give a little bit more gas as you're going with the wind. Yeah. But as long as you have that wing up there solid, you can stay on the ground all day long and do inf- infinite on the ground. And what's great about a tandem trike that I I recently just realized this by working with one of adventures is that you can put a student in the front seat and you can inflate the wing. You can get into a taxi. And then if you've got a nice runway or a nice spot, you can get into a taxi. You've got good comms with your passenger. You can say, I'm passing you the controls. You can put them in a taxi. You've got the throttle. They're taxiing. You're talking them through everything. And then you take off, do a circuit and land and you can teach from the back seat better than you can from just the radio and so you can run them from the back seat then you put them in the back seat and you go to the front seat and you can do this with a with a student over and over again until they can then go to the solo unit and prove those skills without kind of being thrown to the sharks by themselves and not having any exposure but having you literally right next to them, like holding the controls and talking to them is way more personal than a radio from 50 yards away. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That, no, that's all. I, I had all my training up down at one up also for my tandem. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time I ever realized I could fly from the front or the back seat. And not that I'm a trainer, but when I take passengers up, it's always fun handing the controls, let them fly. But that was the first time I realized from a training perspective what you could really do. I mean, you can control the throttle. You can do automatic A's if you want. You can make them bring the wing up. You can do it in steps. And that looked like a really, really good thing. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's an amazing program they have. And um, I think it's honestly probably the safest way to get people flying trike. I believe that. Absolutely. That was that was. I had an awesome flight with uh with Eric Lear with Northern Lights Paramotors, and uh, yeah, it just uh, I liked it because yeah, he did he taxi you know quite a ways down down the field. That was really cool. That was kind of a rush actually, and then he. You know, just took his time, got us up in the air, and it was a really an awesome experience. It really was. It, I was not scared at all. I was so excited. And once we got up there, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So he he had the quad, the quad, um, the heavy trike, the heavier one. Yeah, he has the Zenith as well with the Cosmos. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, like I said, it was. It was an awesome flight. I would, anybody that's never done it before, you got to do it. You got to do it just once. Because once you do it once, then you're going to want to do it again. It's like eating potato chips. That is so true. You oh. can't just take one tandem flight. I've been going crazy for months now, since May. Well, I'm kind I'm of thinking ready. it's like my high school drug dealer. The first one's free, gets you hooked, and then from there <laughs> on out. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll find some time in the summer. I'll take you up. Oh, we'll find I'm North Florida or one of those. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I met Doug in 2018 at Howl at the Howland Flying. So for the yeah, that that one is right scheduled now. too. So that one's okay. scheduled for sometime in June, I think. Yep. Cool. All right, guys, this is so fun. I'm learning a lot tonight. It is fun. It's really neat. I got, uh, like I said, I got two different uh, light trikes down here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys. So, um, this is the Kangook light or basic trike right here, and then the wheels have these right here. Tell me if the, tell me if I'm out of frame. I can't really see over here. Actually, no, you're good. Let me. Go to speaker view. That way, you can, that way, I can see a little bit better. So 
these uh, these wheels right here are really far away like that. Uh, it's a really wide base for the cane. And then uh, this retractor track is a little bit different, but you can see how far the wheelbase is on this canoe. It's really, really wide. Um, the frame would fit up here like this, and then um, you'd sit right here. So it's it's really it's really fun. This is the one that I have the uh, the Adam eighty on. It's great. And then we have this over here. This is a retractor trike. And one of the things that I found with the retractor trike is that the base you have to um, specify what base that you have to put on here because uh, this is for the uh, sky max which is a little bit different than anything else and then if you look at just a regular base this would not fit so you actually have to have something that would fit your base of your paramotor on this another thing too is that uh, with the uh, can gook over here like I just showed you you have one wheel that fits there the other wheel that fits there uh, with this you retract the trike your your um what do you call this right here your your axle your axle <laughs> your ax yes that big word your <laughs> that big word that big word the axle so with this one you slide the axle through here and you got this little button that you push and then it connects like that. So now your axles are like that. And then your wheels are like this. I got the fat wheels instead of the skinny wheels. There's a little button that you push right here. And that releases the little clamp like that. So when you put this on, you just push the end of the wheel and it clips in like so on both sides. So breaking this one down and putting it in the car actually seems like this would be a little bit easier to put this in the car than this one because it actually breaks down a little bit different. So depending on what kind of frame you have, what kind of pair of motor you have, you would definitely need to make sure the base would fit. Now I got one more light trike in the of the paramotor facility and that's for my uh sky tap angel because the frame the base of it is so wide it doesn't even fit on anything any of these over here um have you guys had any issues as far as getting like a, a light trike that would fit a particular paramotor uh brook or well Doug? the if you look at like here you can see behind me there's the one i just built i don't know if you can see it there it is. But uh, I based all that basically on a light on a, on a retractor trike. Took all the measurements from my retractor trike, just kind of duplicated it. Um, I did the same thing with the wheels. So it's got the wheelchair pin style wheels and all that. I did that with the front forks. The front forks come apart real easy. But uh, yeah, I, I love my light trike. This one weighs about two pounds more. Um, I think it's going to fly great. We'll find out, but yeah, the biggest difference we'll talk about later. Uh, we'll talk about the difference in flying a light trike versus a fixed trike because that's where the real difference comes in in my world. Brooke, I think I think you have saved my tail, man. Um, that whole placard thing you were talking about. Um, I know nobody in chat knows we were talking about weights on wings and you know there there's an estimated weight range for your wings so make sure before you buy the wing that you're going to use for your paramotor that you fall into that weight range or if you plan on getting a trike that you add that in so that you know you're still going to be within the weight range you don't want to go way over your weight range so from what i understand you're saying i should be going by the dj the dgac rating not the en rating right correct Okay, so the EN rating shows a max for my wing of 238 pounds. Um, I weigh more than that. So if you add my weight plus the the 50 something, 54 pounds plus gas in my paramotor, I'm way overweight. The DJA, the DGAC rating is 293 pounds. Yeah. I knew big, it was all because you told me 
when you pulled the brakes, it didn't move. Right. And I was like, that's how that wing flies when it's properly loaded. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate the uh, – see, I was just going by the website. I didn't even think about looking at the placard, and, that. yeah, that made all the You're difference. You're not the only one. Don't worry. All right. Thanks. There's a, a couple of things that uh, I'd like to pull up here, Sean. Um, there were some recommendations. I need a couple minutes to set it up, though. I'm just letting you know uh, okay. some other strike information. Um, but, Brooke, yeah, that's important, too, because I looked that same information up, and that's what I, I came up with the same number. So I could imagine, you know, two people have done it. It's like it's like so obvious where the information is, but it's not the information you need. So, uh, yeah. It can be confusing, especially because we're dealing – with um, certifications that are outside of the U.S., they're not necessarily familiar to us. Um, and the companies, I mean, let's be honest, not every paramotor company and every you know, manufacturer puts out manuals and puts out all the stats and are easy to get to. Yeah, right. How many, how many of these light tracks have you got without any way of knowing how to put it together? Every, every one. one of them. Right. Everyone. There's nothing that comes in the in, in with it. There's no paper. There's no <clears throat> hey, no QR code. Go to the website type of thing. Now the Kangook, believe it or not, I was very surprised. They actually send an actual thumb drive with That's all cool. the manuals, how to put it together, with a picture. I mean, everything. I was like, wow, that's incredible. I so actually use that that kind of standard mm -hmm. as to who I'll do my business with now and who I won't. Now, as far, as far as what having like um, a way of putting, them I mean, together. if I'm going to spend eight thousand dollars on a paramotor and it doesn't have a manual, I'm going to go with the company who has an eighty five hundred dollar manual. I mean, eighty five hundred dollar. Like, go to right. go to Parajet's website. That's the definition of professionalism. It's the I definition know. of expertise. Yeah, I you can that. go to some websites and you can't even get a picture of the current model that the dealer is selling you. Not it, yet alone when you get it, it doesn't look like the picture on the website. There's no manual. You got to call that dealer over and over and over. And to me, that's gatekeeping. Yeah, that's how you, they keep yeah. you in their equipment group. Yeah, but you have no way of knowing for if you're 100% sure that you put it together correctly. Exactly. But if you deal with, like, say, Fly Products, if you go onto their website, there's 100% schematics of every single part, every part number, where it goes, how much it costs. I mean, these are these are things used to fly and put our lives on the line. I want to deal with people who put out great equipment and I want to know how it's put together correctly. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, I how heard, many paramotors show up at your school and they're not put on correctly? The harness is weird. So, dude, it's yeah. It's got to be one of the most under discussed things in our industry is the underlying safety concerns, because even the manufacturers don't even have a manual. <laughs> well, the guy who built this Blackhawks, lucky he didn't die on it. So, I mean, it's so far out. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess it's one of those things, too. And that's another reason why you don't want to get gear off of eBay and go try to learn to fly by yourself or learn yeah. to fly off of YouTube videos. It's not that you can't do it. You know, it's the equipment that you get. May You don't know what you don't know to ask. So you may think that this thing's put together right, but maybe the uh, hang points are, are uh, for a right torque but it's actually set up for a left torque, which means that you're gonna go up there and it's gonna to torque so hard, you won't be able to correct it. And if you don't know how to hang check, you don't know, you know some basic things as far as, um, as far as harnesses, you know, harnesses go through your loop, both your loops, and then comes back through that third loop. You gotta, you gotta do it three times. If you don't, your harnesses could slide off. You know, so there's a lot of things that you don't know that you don't know. And that's why you need to get yourself an instructor that knows what they're doing, that is doing what you want to do. So, I mean, if you want to go to an instructor that uh, maybe you want to trike, but they don't trike, you probably don't want to go to them. You want to go to someone that actually does what you want to do. Um, and definitely look at the reputation, too. Um, Brooke, you've been doing your school now for, what, two, three years? Between two and three years. Um, we were a pretty small school. I mean, I did a hundred tandems in the last year. 
Um, I mean, we fly a lot. We'd rather fly than train because flying is what we like to do. Wow. But, uh, but yeah, we, that's what we do full time. But I, I, I'm impressed. I got 24 tandems in the summer, and I thought I did good. So that's impressive. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're looking at flight junkies. I did see this <clears throat> fly pod, and I did watch the video. Oh, so. God. So, <laughs> and, I, and I saw that it was on the news, too, and they were just raving about it. But, you know, one of the things that you can do, you know, you can put yourself – on whatever trike that you have, there are conversion kits for your bike for e-bikes. So there shouldn't be any reason why you can't do the same thing for a trike, especially if you got the wheels like that. I like the big fat wheels personally. Um, do you, okay, so you got the retracted trike, Doug, you said, right? Yeah. Do you have the fat wheels or the small wheels? Skinny? I've got the little ones and I've really, I've only had the skinny ones burn me one time and the big ones would have too. But you should never land in a cornfield especially <laughs> proud. It just comes to a stop no matter what. So, yeah, I would have lost either way. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've actually landed on the beach and that sort of thing with no problem. So, it, yeah, the little ones were fine. Because I think that uh, Brian Haybell Waller, he, he has the retractor strike with the skinny wheels. And I like the big fat wheels just because, you know, they – they won't rut up on, you know, muddy or wet grass or whatever. So what are we looking at now, bud? This is the MacFly Tandem Trike. Any uh, any of y'all had any experience with this one yet? I have not. No. Uh, I apologize. The ones that I'm showing you, uh, a couple of guys asked me to pull them up. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. I will say I did have, can you go back to the, the shot of that that frame, the net? I did train a student on a solo trike that had the exact same frame and it flexed considerably. It really? actually broke all the lines on all the quadrants. Oh. And I didn't it didn't break the lines from hitting the prop. They have a and again, I'm not saying that the, the, the equipment is, is anything bad. It may not have been set up correctly, but I just it was a catastrophe, the one I saw, to be honest with you. You know, I don't know why more paramotors don't come with like a cross member, you know, crossbar. Some guys weld a crossbar, you know, across the frame to give it some more rigidity. Um, All you need is the double hoop. You know, there should be another way of, you know, clipping on a second hoop to give it that rigidity. And you've I got to that think that's a tandem trike. So that's going to have, it's going to be exposed to 42 meter wings. Yeah, what do you hoop. think a 42 meter wing and eight mile an hour wind it's going to do to that little single hoop. Exactly. Yeah, that's a I lot I don't care of if it's all titanium and thick gauge. It's going to bend it. It's going yeah. to happen. Yeah. Yeah. My, my foot launch is dual hoop, which has saved my prop. I mean, uh, I mean, oh, that yeah. flight I took, I turtled. So when I fell back, if, if I didn't have the double hoop, it would have hit my prop and snapped it. But that hoop in the prop never touched the ground. I really like that double hoop. So what, There's what tons of lying? stuff out there that works. Yeah, but it's the uh, you're putting fly product. your life and somebody else's life on the line. Why? Why not right. have the extra layers of protection here? Why not have the double hoop? Nobody wants to destroy your this equipment and pay extra money. So I just for advice for if you're getting into tandem, don't be cheap because it's not going to play out in the end. You're going to end up buying more equipment from breaking stuff. Exactly. And yeah. Brooke, since you're since you have tandem equipment, um, how much does a tandem equipment usually cost that's good stuff, not that cheap stuff that you're talking about? I mean, I would say if you're looking at anything that it does not have the moster on it, because I think you really need more power than a moster 185 to do tandems, you're looking at entry level thirteen to fourteen thousand. And that's not including a wing. No, no, that's just the that's just the machine itself, and then no. you're looking at another four to five grand. By the time you get communications, strobes, and all the stuff you need, you're at twenty thousand dollars, no matter how you look at it. Easy, because you definitely need the bigger uh, reserves yeah. too. You want to make sure that you're no. safe. You got to have at least one reserve, and if you're doing tandem, I'd say two reserves. Why not? Like, I mean, I put a ballistic reserve on my machine. Third eye. Right. Yep. So I, I mean. Mine. 
why not? You're, we're already getting to fly for the cheapest amount anybody can. We're already getting access to the coolest part of aviation. Why not spend a little bit of extra money to make sure everybody's safe while we're doing it? Exactly. That's just my perspective exactly. from a school and from a person. Because you got to think, and anybody, any good lawyer will tell you, you hurt one person out there. You lose everything you've ever worked for in your whole life. You get sued for it. Why are you going to cut corners on taking people up in the sky? It's just not worth it. No, it's not. So if you plan on doing tandems, plan on at least 20000 bucks to do tandems. And, and realistically, I would say all his numbers are right on. I mean, 13000 buys you an entry-level, good frame, 300, 301 motor that's safe for tandems. But, I mean, you're starting about 13000 Yeah, with the wing... You're at 17 to 18, yep. and two Bose headsets are 1600 a piece. I forget the hell. I mean, oh. it just depends on what equipment you're buying, you know. And you got to pay to go down and get certified to even do tandem. So you got to add yeah. that cost in there, too. And then you yep. got to pay every year to keep your certification, yep. which isn't much. But so Tony, Tony wanted to know how much that was. It was 4,960 euros, which is about $5,300. That's for the tandem trike uh the max fly okay um so for those uh that may want to uh do the tandem exemption and get a tandem trike uh brooke what does it cost to go down and get your tandem certification uh to be able to do such a thing and how long does it take yeah so i, I did that a couple of years ago and i recently just um was a guest instructor at One Up while they did it for a handful of other guys. Um, I believe they charge fifteen hundred dollars. It's a five day course. Um, they are asking that you have, um, I believe it's a hundred hours in the last year, and that you have PPG three skill set. Um, if you don't have trike experience, they can transition you to trike. But it takes about three to five days. It's about fifteen hundred bucks. And uh, if you're a competent foot launch pilot and you're not a weekend warrior, you actually you fly, you're passionate and you have a skill set. I think um, just about anybody can go through their program and become an excellent tandem pilot. Um, and I think the, the money is well worth it. Um, I, I honestly am very impressed with their school. And uh, again, I went there. I would recommend it to anyone. And uh, I think you should take it very seriously, though. I don't. I think a lot of people think the idea of taking people up is cool and fun, but um, I can tell you, I had all those great ideas, but when the reality came that I had this expensive machine, I had this person's life in my on the line, you've got to, um, you've got to be way more analytical than even flying yourself. Yep. So it's not about how much fun you're going to have up there with them. It's how about how you can show them a great time and their version of a great time may not be what you think. And so what I, what I learned more down there at one up was less about flying and a lot about how to work with passengers, the psychology of teaching, the psychology of taking a passenger up and making them feel comfortable. And there's way more to being a, a successful tandem pilot than just being a good pilot. You have to be a good ambassador to the sport you have to be able to talk and work with people and you have to make people comfortable in a situation mm -hmm. that if you can remember back to your first flight was a very uncomfortable situation. So um, one up is the great place to do it. They have an amazing school, 1500 bucks, three to five days to do it, but it's not what you think. It's not just about flying. It's a lot up here, not just your skill set of being a pilot. I, I can't agree with that more. I mean, I had mine, I got mine done little over a year ago they, it was about 1500 bucks they did require one year of trike so that was one thing they did request but it wasn't really flying that i learned it was the the respect for what you're doing the you're taking somebody else up with you it's the liability it's the it was the whole mentoring part of it that i really got something out of it so it wasn't really the flight skills and all that. I can fly a trike, big deal. Um, but it was the day-to-day, -day, how you 
how you approach the person, you know, how do you make them comfortable, you know, and then how do you resist? I mean, if it's rough at all out, I won't fly a tandem. Um, I won't take that risk. And really, I thought when I go in, I'm going to go 100 hours. I'm going to get my tandem. I'm going to fly all the time. It doesn't really work that way. You you really learn respect for the sport when I was down there that, that, that last time. Brooke and, and Doug, um, if you have a motor out on a trike, do you think that you need – more room for whatever LZ you try to, or wherever you plan on putting that thing down. Do you think you need more room than you would foot launch or is it close to the same? Or do you need to have an out that's got a lot more room because you're on a trike? You always have to have an out. And I know we all say that in this whole sport, but I know 99% of us aren't thinking about it all the time in the, in flight. I fly my tandems like the motor's going to quit any second. And that goes for climb outs, obstacles, turns, everything. I always want to have the biggest LZ I can get because if the motor cuts out, it's not necessarily can I get the thing into a tight LZ. It's can I make the person feel safe? Right. And that's not going to happen if I got to whip a bunch of wing overs to cut it down right over the edge of the trees and get it in. And you don't, you can't do that with these 42 meter wings. They float, they fly. If there's any heat on the ground, when, once they get down to the ground, they're just going to float longer and longer. So I fly it like it's an airplane. Um, I fly it. I, I literally fly it like it's a Cessna in regards to where my landings are, knowing that I can be a better pilot and tolerate less. But but relying on more runway is what keeps things safe. And runway behind you is useless. So yep. Yep. that's I, I just don't want to be in a situation where I wish I had done otherwise. When you fly tandem, both you, uh, Brooke and Doug, uh, do you actually have a specific place that you fly? Because there are so many different um, outs in your loop that you do, or do you just fly around? Um, um, I, I have certain fields that I only launch from. So I've got one's got a really long runway. That's typically my tandem field. All the other ones that are shorter, thoroughly foot launch. Um, so like he said, runway behind you is completely useless. The bigger the space, the better for tandem. You can give them a lot of time on the ground, get comfortable for a second, before you finally take off. And uh, yeah, that, and Brooke, just because you mentioned it, when I had my training down at 1UP, I thought they were screwing with me. I was, we were flying along and uh, we're coming in for landing and the motor dies. And I'm like, they're messing with me. They're wanting to see if I can land this thing motor up. Like, what the hell is going on? My ponytail caught the choke. Pulled the choke all the way on, so the motor died. So I thought they were screwing with me, and they were trying to do a motor out simulation. And no, I killed the damn motor with my ponytail. So, and, and that just goes to show how even a proper pre-flight, everything's perfect. Yep. And though, and that's the thing about aviation. Yeah. That's the thing about life. It's not the thing you're thinking about that's going to bite you in the ass. It's going to yep. thing you could never think about. Just like right. your hair catching the choke on the back of that zenith you yeah. never could have imagined that right no i mean really but I, I genuinely thought they had a button or something that were messing with me and uh no i would have never thought of that in a million years and yeah. that's what's burned me in the past anyway is what you don't see coming is going to get you so yeah. um you had, you had mentioned landing and all that realistically tandem like you I want as much runway as I can possibly have. Foot launch, if you're doing or not for a tandem, sorry, if you're doing a light trike, I can land a light trike in about the same space as foot launch, but the terrain's got to be perfect, where the terrain doesn't have to be perfect for foot launch. That's the only difference there. Excellent. Oh my gosh, is it really after eight o'clock already? We've we been talking for an hour. Holy about where I am. Yeah, we still got questions in the chat too. 
That is crazy. Um, so real quick, um, if you remember, or if you were around last week when we did our secret code, put it in now. If you do put your secret code in uh, that we talked about, then you are going to win something. We're still going to do the spinning wheel, but you still get to win if you were the first person that puts that that code in that we talked about last week. All right. So we'll have to see if anybody says it. Do you remember what it was, guys? Yep. Okay. I got wrote, I wrote it down so I remember. Me I too. Put, Me I'll, too. I'll put it here. That's kind of how it goes. I'll know it if I hear it. All right. I'll go ahead and type it in our chat right here. <laughs> okay. Remember we wow, we it. Travis, you don't go that far back. Did you watch He Haul, Travis? You must be an older pilot. I'm just wondering because uh, I know, nine. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I, I, I missed it. What do they What do they say? BR five four nine. That sounds familiar, like um, a, a spark plug. <laughs> wow, Sean! Yeah. Wow, not even you. You okay? What? You have to be old enough to know where that's from. <laughs> you don't know where BR five four nine's from? No, it's oh like my God. Spark, it sounds like a spark plug number. I don't, well, like a, I don't I'll, I'll say this: Junior Samples lived really close to where I used to live in Georgia. Do you know who Junior Samples is? <laughs> Damn! No. Nope. E haw man, come on! Oh, okay. come I've, I've heard of hee haw, but I don't know. How was that? How was that he haw? I don't remember. He that was a long time ago. I don't remember. I mean, I, I remember just, watching I, it. I, just I don't remember, remember the song. That's Junior, exactly. Junior well, Samples was a car salesman. He'd be like, "Come on down, just call BR five four nine. That's BR five four nine. That's right." <laughs> He was hilarious. Okay, yeah, that's oh, what it's from. Okay, I, I don't really don't remember. Don't get me start singing Hee-haw. that song. Oh, do what? Do want to say? Where are a, you tonight? A, oh, you a, give a shout out. We do do a streaming right. audio podcast also to Podbean, and I just want to say hello to Passive J that's joined us and been listening to us. So thank you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you. All right, so you saw what I posted on here. Did anybody say anything? I, mean, who, I saw somebody said it was rigged. Tony <laughs> said, it was, said it was rigged. Yeah, oh, yeah, Bonnie mean? Brian Fraser says it's the pig's name. Yes, it's the pig's name. Yes, what, what is the pig's name? Yeah, what uh, is- Bonnie, I think, has got it because that's really close. No, she got it. She got to come up with a name. Oh, Bonnie did. That's what I'm did? saying. Look, yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, we'll put it in your box of goodies that you won over here. So when you come over here, you'll have a box of fun stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Congratulations, Bonnie. That almost sounded that bad. That is so amazing. I tell yeah. you what, there's people that know this show and know what we do and know all about us. Um, it's almost like we're kind of famous. <laughs> <laughs> it won't it's even get us a cup of coffee, people. but yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Good job, Bonnie. Well, Bonnie she was on it. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is the uh, pig, but I don't I didn't remember the uh, BR549. That sure looks like a spark plug number though, oh, doesn't it? <laughs> us, it does. us, us Michigan girls were like that, you know. Yeah, it was it was uh-huh. We don't miss a beat. Yeah, it was Andy's pig. How about that? All right. Talk. Talk. All right, so um, before we spin the wheel, if Will would like to say hello to everybody that he did put on the wheel. Wheel? Yeah, hey, but we stopped questions in the chat. Yeah, we'll continue the, the questions. Okay. The I'm going to knock one of the questions out, though, before I forget. Okay. All right, so it's not really a question. Yeah, it's kind of a question. Jeremy is asking, are, uh, are you required to serve snacks on tandem flights? <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Good one, Jeremy. Yeah, that's good. But, oh, okay. Brooks <laughs> went to go get the snacks. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, Brian Franz says, if you do enough acro, your passengers will provide you with the snacks. Uh, that's why you have this. <laughs> okay. Nah. Oh, you really got a barf bag. You got a barf bag for them, too? <laughs> oh, yeah. I carry barf bags all the time. Really? Uh, How many people really? have barfed on a tandem? If you'll hold up for a second, I'll share a picture. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh, my goodness. I never even thought about 
a oh. bar Everybody bag. just hang tight. Hey, <laughs> hey, Linda, is uh, Robert my is your son? Of course, does he? Is that video that we watched? Is that on his YouTube channel? Well, I don't know if when he was doing a tandem. Uh, he was doing a tandem. Yeah, when he got sick. Oh my gosh, that was freaking yes. hilarious. I, <laughs> um, I think he has to get permission. Yeah, from the okay. pilot. Yes, um, if he can put it up, uh, because it's been a few years. Um, yeah, I'll have to ask him if he can put it on there because <laughs> I, I think he still had to get permission. Yeah, <laughs> to do it. That yeah, was yeah. Fun. That would be okay. very highly hit on on a TikTok for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I tell every tandem passenger, puke down, not over your shoulder, whatever. You <laughs> no, now oh. I know why. Now I know why, Doug, you say that you want to be in the front, the passengers in the back. That's smart. I Perfect. Like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but don't, don't hit the fan, please. Just don't. <laughs> because when it hits the fan, man, it hits the fan. <laughs> All right. So bad will happen. There you go. If I call your name out, you are on the spinning wheel of winning things. If not, let me know, okay? Oh, my yes, God. You did. caught it in the air. That's oh, man. terrible. Wait. Oh. No, that's, that's probably oh. just a screenshot of is that a freaking video. still photo? Or is that that's a screenshot. Photo? I'm sure it's a screenshot of the oh. video. But, yeah, wow. Did you catch it? Oh, look at his face. Look at your face, <laughs> look at your face man. <laughs> he said, oh, no, it's coming. Oh you know what direction character. that takes? Yeah. So the worst part was <laughs> he's up there and he's like, he's like, yeah, man, I'm not feeling too good. Uh oh. I was like, what's up? He's like, I ate a bunch of cookout before I came. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. I tell him, I'm going to start whipping it to the right and to the left. And when I go to the left, I want you to throw up. So I would put him in the wing overs. So I could use the inertia to throw the vomit to the other side. <laughs> Did it Which work? Just made him sicker. <laughs> yeah, I think. Oh. So now, on my chest strap, I carry one of these. I can reach out, hand it to a passenger, and they can keep it if they get uh, sick or nauseous. Or the very least, you can cover your face with it. <laughs> now, l let me say this: it's it's our job to make people feel comfortable up there. Right. It's not funny. It's not cool that somebody threw up on me. It's okay to kind of laugh behind the scenes with my paramotor it, buddies, but I'm not necessarily happy about that. So I make sure that every flight is as smooth as can be, but ultimately some people are going to get sick no matter what you do. And you just got to give them, I tell them, give me the double thumbs down. We'll put the thing down. So you don't want to take a person up there and whip it around or anything like that, but you can fly the thing straight and narrow and some people are still going to get sick. So that's why I carry this. Well, and that's a great idea. And I'm setting myself up. I know better, but as another tandem pilot, I think it's funny in all honesty, um, it is. <laughs> but <laughs> now it's going to happen to me. So <laughs> no matter what, I said it out loud. First flight, it'll happen. No question. And yeah. I always tell people, no matter what, if you're panicking, whatever, you can't talk, do this. And I <laughs> land immediately. So, or I find a place to land immediately. But, man, I'm going to get puked on now. Crap. Um, but still <laughs> funny. Still funny. It's a catch-22 with that. Because even, even with airplanes, I would not tell students that, you know, if you need a barf bag, it's a it's readily available because it kind of, you know, I'm thinking it kind of gets their mind thinking. But I could always, at the drop of a hat, reach right back and boom, you know, I knew exactly where it was. I put my hand on that thing in an instant. But man, dang. No, it's a good idea to have a couple of those in the front seat, pals, front seat pockets. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I like that. <laughs> or, 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 I do or tell them not to eat before the flight, right? Yeah. 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 I like to tell my passenger before I'm going to take a left turn or a right turn, especially when I first start them off the ground, hey, we're going to take a left turn. It might help for you to look to the left a little bit as we move that way. And then you can gauge their response to it. So I'm constantly checking in with my customer, and I actually run a mirror on my machine <laughs> that allows me to see my customer's face at all times. That's the best idea ever. 
Um, Because that's the one thing you're flying with somebody right in front of you. They could be scared crapless and you have no idea. Now, the pictures I get of everybody is, yeah. Um, But I mean, still, they could be up in full panic mode. So I thought about that too, putting a mirror up front just to see them. But yeah, uh, and they can yeah, see that's, you. That's so when you're smiling and you're having a good time, right. they're like, okay, we're having a good time. Everything's okay. That reassures them that everything's okay. So mm-hmm. I love the mirror. I think it's, I think it's scary to be up there and have, I mean, I've been on the front seat and these guys are behind me. I don't know what they're thinking. Are they scared? But um, if I can see my guy back there just grinning and loving it, man, that means I'm going to have a good time too. Um, I'm curious if you guys, where did the, what, where's your mirror mount on yours? So I have the two bars that come down on my, on the, yeah, I have, I have same, the mirror same mount on the passenger. I'm trying to show the camera right on the edge. And it's a Ram mirror to where when I fly solo, I can angle it back and see the gas tank. And when they are, when I have a passenger, I can rotate it around. And as soon as they sit down, I say, why don't you go ahead and arrange that mirror so I can see you and you can see me. And they just move it. We lock it into place and we're smiling. So when I'm talking to them, it's like we're right there. They love it. That's fantastic. I'm going to do a little Amazon shopping. That's a fantastic idea. And that's got a good psychological effect, too, because it, 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 it makes them feel even though because you're behind them, they're looking forward. They don't have any peripheral of you. They've only got you in their head. So having that visual of knowing that the pilot is right there, right beside you has to have a psychological effect and help them feel more comfortable. It's definitely a comfort that I, I would think. Yeah. You couple that with quality communications mm-hmm. and you could take a person who is terrified and they would think they're sitting on their couch. If um, you can just talk to them correctly and, and, and walk them through what's happening. And if you just tell them what's going on, they their mind will catch on but if you don't talk to them you don't give them any input their mind runs rampant with anxiety and it's up to you to tell a story that's why when your customer shows up you get to know them you find out something about them and throughout that flight you're tying things back to why are they here why are they inspired and you're trying to create that sense of wonder and amazement same reason you got into the sport it's up to you to do that for them. So um, it's an art to being a good tandem pilot, in my opinion. There you go. Yeah, I think I'm sure Eric was talking to me, but I couldn't hear. I, I couldn't hear him because I was yelling so loud because I was so super, <laughs> super excited up there. Um, I was just like so in awe and I'm like, this is so cool. And then pretty soon I'm like, yeah, I'm just yelling, I did it, ah, you know, the whole Um, time, whole time. And you're going to get another shot, trust me. (laughs) Um, We'll make sure it happens again. Uh, Brooke, I'm curious, just because the most surprising thing I ever hear ever from tandem passengers, and I bet probably 15 of my 24, when we landed, I've said, that was the most relaxing thing ever. Oh, my God. And I would never expect that reaction. I would expect, yeah, oh, but they're like, that was so calming, so relaxing. So, I mean, that's a problem. Do you, do you ever get that reaction? 100%. And they say it was so much smoother than I thought yep. it was going to be. Yep. And if you're doing it right, that's also one little tip I tell our tandem pilots. And they told me this at one up is if you, we get off the ground, and we, I fly a quick circuit. I do a touch and go immediately. Me too. So they're not afraid of landing the whole time we're flying. Yep. So oh, I go ahead and get go. that over with. But, um, but yeah, if you're doing it right, they're going to say it was relaxing, it was smooth, and it was one of the most amazing things that's ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah that would always surprise me. I was adrenaline or exciting or, oh, my God. But it was always like I had one gal tell me she almost fell asleep. Um, I'm like, well, that would be kind of a waste, but I mean, <laughs> still, I was surprised at how calm they all were. So, well, and maybe it's just me <laughs> and female passengers being calm doesn't happen very often. That might be it, but um, it really surprised me. So, yeah, 
Right, so Linda, I... how did you Linda, how did you keep your cowboy hat on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well there. that that's the Arizona girl still in me. Yeah. Cause I I I traveled the rodeo scene for like 18 years. So um it you know You're it just stays it. with me. This is my signature. That's what I, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I love somebody said, hey, let's go horseback riding or whatever. I'd be like, okay, let's do it. You're going to need a cowboy hat helmet then. I mean, <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. Exactly. Paint the yeah. cowboy hat on there. You'll be all right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Brooke, you know who uh you know who gave me my first tandem ride? I think I may have been the one. You were it, dude. Yeah. And I, that was far. I didn't think, I didn't consider it relaxing. I consider, I thought it was exhilarating. It was just like, well, I mean, we had a little bit. extra. Bonus. That's what I would expect. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I get that. But it was just, it's so nice just to go up and chill and like not have to do anything. You can just like soak in all the scene. Oh, by the way, I really appreciate your extra donation on PayPal for that. Oh man. It was worth twice that amount. I'm telling well, you. I, I thank you very much. much. I really do. <laughs> You're a good pilot. <laughs> that's that's something else I noticed. If I take other pilots up flying, they're like, wow, it's fantastic just to go up flying and not have to do anything. So yeah. that surprised me a little bit too. It's it's really, really relaxing up here when you don't have to fly. And <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's weird some of the things that passengers say that you wouldn't expect. Um, yeah, that's that's another big one. I, I I've honestly I I've been sitting in here on this on this whole podcast and I'm probably the only one here that's never been in a tandem before. Wow, gotta do yeah. it! Man. Well, you better do it. You better. I think do if it, somebody's Ryan. interested in getting into paramotoring and if they're scared or something, I mean, you could obviously go do a tandem ride. Or I think the first experience I ever had with flying like that was parasailing. It's really cheap. You get pulled behind a boat. They bring you way up in the air. You got a glider over your head. It's basically the same thing, except it's completely quiet with a paramotor. You got the motor. It's sound terrifying. <laughs> it's not terrifying. Oh, it's it would have been. I was, I was never. It was. Oh, well, I it, did, was, it was a little hard on the boys. Um, I was. Yeah. Well, I was in the Bahamas when I did it. It was nothing but clear blue water. I mean, it was like amazing to see that. So yeah, I, I think my heart is tough. You know, we're going on a cruise this June. I wonder if there's some parasailing in one of our ports. I might have to look into it. Oh, that. yeah. They, I've never they, done that. Oh, it's fun. I mean, it's it'll be just like what you did with SIV, except you're not having to do any moves. <laughs> just well, don't let cool. them drop you in the water, like near the sharks. They like doing that. They'll let you come down and then dip in the water and pull you back up. But if there's sharks, tell them, no, don't, don't put me in the water. <laughs> It's like SIV with the alligators. Yeah, yeah that, that's always fun. It's like, oh, there's an alligator and I'm coming down. Crap, here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, well, that's fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it was fun. I'm right, like I said, I'm going back to Torchport in, in May and I'm going to go up on another one. And I've already talked my my, uh, my friend Leslie. I think I talked her into going up. So... It's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I'm when I came down, I was crying, up. I was laughing, I I had so many emotions going on, and it was just cool. Everybody was so sweet down there, and they, you know, they're just, and that's what it's about, you know. And you land, you got people that are supporting you, that you are you flew, and they're excited for you, and you know, it's just something I'll never forget. I know there's more to come. Really, really is. So. Considering that I'm doing this, doing the shows for years, I decided, well, I need to go up on a tandem, you know, so I can, because I hang with you guys all the time, and you're always talking about going up in the air and everything, and I, I just uh, went to Torch and decided, all right, I'll go up. You know, I wasn't like I woke up in the morning and said, I'm going to go flying. It was something that I had to really, i been thought about for over a year you know like okay i'm gonna do this and before i knew it i was in that seat and i was ready to go it took you over a year to to get mentally focused to do it or just took a year to yeah yeah 
I just kept thinking about it. And I knew if I didn't do it, I regret it. And, um, and I wanted to be an inspiration for other people, you know, to get up there and do it that are like my age, as the saying goes, you know? Um, yeah, that's another reason too. I wanted to inspire people, but it really, it's just something once I got up in the air and I did it, it just, my, my life changed for the good. I really did. It totally brought me out of my comfort zone. And like, like I said, anybody who goes up in the air, you're, you're going to experience a different, everybody's going to experience it differently. You know, you can't explain it till you go up and everybody's going to have different feelings. You're either going to hate it or you're going to love it. Right. So I that loved it. True. And you've taken your first one last year and you can go up again this year. So you're, you're not going to go out and fly yourself. You're just going to go out and tandem every year and, and keep that, that enjoyment up. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to buy you get a machine anytime soon. I I'm just going to, you know, I'll just, Everywhere I go, I'll just hitchhike a ride on a tandem. Hey, want to take me up? I'm Paramount. And they'll be like, There's sure. A go. lot of people out at the uh, at the fly-ins just go out to all the fly-ins, right? Yeah. Uh, Brooke, do yeah. you go I out to the fly-ins? I went to my first one in Holland, Holland, Michigan. That's where I met Doug. And I was so, I was so fascinated. And that was the first time that I actually saw, you know, these paramotors. I actually saw them in person, you know what I'm saying? And it was, it was a... Uh, there's my she's up um it was pretty exciting so Excellent. yeah and then i then uh as we went on through the shows and everything you know eric and jade said hey come on out to torch we're going to be out there this was last year and uh why don't you come out i'll take you up and i said okay and so i did that's it all right um it's almost 8 30 so let's go ahead and do the spinny wheel will um, also too we got uh, two people listening passive j and pac-man into our live stream our live audio stream on uh um podbean so uh we probably are going to add them or did you add them will pac-man and passive j oh will you're on mute we can't hear you Oh, Derek Trout's in the crowd. You're still on mute, Will. Come on, Will. Well. Well. <laughs> Terrible. I only have a hundred thousand screen, you know, screens mm. on my windows <laughs> trying to find you guys. <laughs> so uh you said Pac-Man and Passive yeah. Jay? Yeah, Passive J is listening in our uh, audio, and uh, Pac-Man is listening also. So, hey, let's go ahead and oh. add you guys. I mean, if you're guy, if you guys are listening, hey, we're gonna add you too. Why yeah. not? Yeah, I gotta do a shout out real quick. I see the names there. Uh, Linda Kramer, she's in the chat. Hi, Linda, welcome. I'm so happy you're here tonight. I got to meet you on the after show on Robert's show on Thursday, Thursday night, and uh, she's an awesome lady. She is an awesome lady. I can't wait to see more of her. The hot buttered Steve's out there. Walter's out there. Derek Trout's out there. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh huh. That's what I'm talking about. Walter, Walter. Flying Flamingo. Uh, Tony, to answer your question, I think Brooke said earlier the Easy. most he can take up on that tandem Easy. wing is a uh, thousand pounds. That's yes. on the 42 meter cyclone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my my Niviac R bus thirty seven has an all up weight maximum of one thousand fifty. So yeah, they're typically right around there. Oh, Mirror Bear actually uh, joined our audio chat too. So let's go ahead and add Mirror Bear M E R E B E A R to the spinny wheel of winning things. So um, maybe they can win something. So there we go. Bear. Yeah. So it's M E R E. B E A R. Hi, Bill H. I see you in there. This is my favorite part, just reading the wheel, seeing everybody who's in the chat. Thank uh, you, chatters. You ready? Will, Will can you uh, say hi to everybody in our chat? Because I think that we. Um, everybody. We that. I'm, I'm excited for you to go back up, Linda. I, I think. Thank you. Know, you. You, you, need I am to, too. you need to get back up in the air again. I mean, you keep talking about the experience you had, and I'm like, she needs another one. Do Absolutely. it. Yep. <laughs> sounds oh my like, god I sounds don't like, like you need to take the control you know, oh, so we got yeah, did, 
Paul yes. Marzano, Passive J, Mir Beer, Mir Bear, Eric PPG Lear, Derek Trout, Linda Kramer, James Belleville, A Lines, Pac Man, boop, boop, boop. Eric Von Eric, Run Into the Sky, Org, Mad Sloper, Gary, I think it's Gary Simons, a typo. Jeremy, Adventureland, yeah. Steve, Andy Bynum, Walter Priori from Australia, Brian Tupper, Bonnie Franz, John Wayne's in the house, Tony, Mar Tony <laughs> Marzano, <laughs> Harrismith 101, Mr. Dana 54, <laughs> what's up Dana, Michael Skates, Travis DuPont, Angela Preslick, Angela Preslick, Andy yeah, Bynum, and I have Andy in there twice, I sure do, so sorry yeah. Andy, can only be in there once dude, nice try. No, <laughs> oh, my bad. Tony Marzano. Do I have him in there twice? I don't think so. That's okay. So what's up, Tony? Bill H. James. Deweese Milstead. PPG. The other Nick. Brian Franz. Greg Laney. Flying Flamingo. Jerry. Hey. PPG. And uh, okay. Did I say James Belleville? I don't think so. Tony Marzano is in there twice. Is he? Okay. Yeah. So I did say, I did read these guys. Paul Marzano. I see James Belleville okay. in there. So okay. So where is Tony Marzano? You say he's in there twice? Yes. There and then go down a little oh, bit more. Oh, towards the go. bottom. Okay. I yep. see there him on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tony, <clears throat> man, you're sneaky, dude. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Will. Hey, Will. Next, um, next week, I'll... Um, you put the names out like this, and I'll read all the names. Okay. Okay. I I want to do that next time. You got it. Okay. Because okay. you're, your you're doing like so much tonight. Now I should have spoke earlier. Because yeah, I love doing that. All right. That'll, all right. that'll be Linda's job from now on. Then. All right. It, yeah, I can it. see. Yeah, I will. I'll read them all off. That'd be fun. All right. So we're shuffling. Got to memorize them too. You can only. I only put them on a <laughs> period of time. So I'm going to pick I'm going to spin the wheel and you all pick a name who you think it's going to be, but you can't say it until the <laughs> wheel starts spinning. Okay. Okay. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with Jeremy. Exciting. Is he going to be Linda? I'm, I'm thinking this might be that the new person we put in there, that uh, mirror bear, uh, maybe, maybe Pac-Man or Passive J that's listening. Angela Presley. Maybe. I'm thinking hot um, buttered Steve. Just Derek, I think maybe name. Derek Trout might win. Yeah, DT, he's a winner. Bonnie he won, he won the uh, Tucker contest. Oh, really? Oh, oh, oh. 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 It is going to be Derek Trout. <laughs> <He's so laughs> yeah. oh, my God. I told you he's a winner. He's my bud, too. Uh, Am I a or what? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Could say thank you, Paramount. That was good. He won the Tucker contest and this contest. <laughs> what are the odds of that? I We're gonna have to interview him now. Yeah, I yeah. They're the lottery. <laughs> well, to go yeah, they luck get a ticket, man. <laughs> well, so, luckwise, if he's not flying, he should be flying. Um, because yeah. <laughs> So don't Congratulations, worry. Derek. Yeah, Derek, don't yeah. And you guys that didn't win, don't worry. If you get a free account over at Paramotor Arkansas, so go to paramotorarkansas.com. Make a Derek wins a tandem with me. There you is that is that what you want to do, Brooke? <laughs> well, I mean, I just flew with Derek last week, so sure. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> ah. All right. I, oh, I, I will say you completely inspired me. I am now www.myflyguy.com. So I do have my own URL Yay! now. So, All right. Yeah. He's got his own .com. Excellent. Yeah. Had to do like, it. I like uh, that. M I F L Y G U I dot com. M I F L Y G U I G U I. So michiganflyguy.com. Michiganflyguy.com. Hey, but but like come, Michigan fly guy. PPG oh. or John Wayne posted a video of flying at Paramotor, Arkansas. He did. Indeed. Yep, 29 yeah. minutes ago. He just posted a video. So we yeah. just right. fly down there with Sean. Yeah, he came down awesome. to uh to one of our classes and uh flew around and showed the students how to do it. So thank you, John Wayne, for going down there. Thank we have a blast. Wayne. Yeah, and John said the first 10 people that watch it will earn a thousand dollars. 
Awesome. I'm going to watch oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> well, like I said, guys, if you uh, uh, want to win something, and uh, you can always go to um, paramotorarkansas.com, make yourself a free account. And when you make that free account, please make sure that you add in your mailing address. Every week or so, we go through and just randomly pick somebody, and then we send something out. So you, if you got something in the mail that you didn't win or whatever, you won because we just pick something and send it out. We do a lot of uh, 3D printing, so we've been printing a lot of different types of uh, chase cams, and we just send these because we got so many of them. We just put some together. Good and we Lord. Just, and You've we just been printing your tail off. We have now, those are cool looking. And now you even, know, since you're talking about all the trite guys and all that, you might want to think about putting a program in there for the line holders for the sides. If you're gonna 3D print them, all my <laughs> all my line holders are 3D printed. So oh, I actually got some someplace. I did print them and I printed out some uh some uh shoe uh what do you call those? The um the the GoPro shoe. the GoPro mount for your shoes. Oh, nice! I shoe got cam. Yep. Shoe yeah, cam. for your shoe cam. Yep. Uh, I, thought, I thought those were Walmart cams, but that's different, probably for a creepy reason. So, <laughs> no, no, once. So yeah, if you want to just go over to paramotorarkansas.com, free account. Put awesome. your mailing address in there, and then we will we just send stuff out randomly. So you might just come, you might, you know, what else we got that we that you might get in the mail too? I don't know if I have it here or not, but no, I don't. Um, I so, got, I got a yeah. question. Sure. So who who invented the chase cams? Like who is the original inventor of it? Because now you know, because now a lot of people like you're making the chase cams. A lot of people make them like you do, right? I mean, they're that's a big deal right now. There's a lot of chase cams out there. Plus, you can make one out of a, a, a two liter bottle. You know, yeah. I, mean, you, I mean, you don't need to print out one. They were making two liter bottles, uh, putting one on the end of a um, uh, on the end of an arrow. So they had the arrow chase cams. Um, then they started making uh, 3D printed chase cams, all sorts of different types. I have no idea who made the first one, but I think that. The first time that they made a cam that was small enough to fly behind you, they probably did that. Can you, but I don't can know. you explain what they do? I'm sorry. Can you explain what the chase cam does for people that don't know, sure. you know, sure. what so, its purpose is? Sure. So let me just grab my lightning thing here that I plugged my phone into, but don't use this. So what you do is you connect this to like your... Um, your C line. So if you have A, B, C's, and D's, you want to connect it to like the C line, not the D line, and definitely not your brakes, right? So center as you can. We want to make sure that when you connect this with a cam on it, probably something like a session, something small and light, is that this thing will float behind you with right. your camera with an angle that shows you, you know, um, with, you know, shows you from behind shows your paramotor, your wing. So they have the chase cam. And they also have a wing cam. And I love my wing cam. It's uh, it's a GoPro mount that's on a magnet. So you put it in the center of your wing. It, cl it clamps down like that. You put your GoPro facing up which will be facing down and you got amazing videos of you looking you know look uh, a camera looking down at you you got the chase cam that shows you from behind and then of course you got your selfie stick i mean you get all sorts of really cool camera angles hmm. okay um what kind of camera angles do you guys use i mean let's talk about cameras real quick um selfie yeah. stick uh, cameras oh. uh three wait wait. But, 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 wait 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 you win. This thing is freaking fantastic. I told you, I told you, I told you. Oh, I love this thing. Now, it's the creepiest thing in the world. Put on a tripod and it follows you around the room. That's really creepy. But the idea of having a tandem passenger be able to put a mic on their helmet, have them use this, that'll be fantastic for tandem flights. But I use it in the classroom 
And it literally follows me around the room when I do lectures. So I love that thing. Works great. Run two hours on a battery. Yeah. yeah it's got a DJ Osmo. Yeah, Osmo Pocket. Yeah, I don't, pocket. I don't use mine enough. I should. I've had it for a while. I just rarely I, use the thing. I need to. Yep, those pockets are great because you can have your throttle in one hand, the pocket in the other. You got your brake toggle. So, I mean, you, yep. it feels normal. I mean, you have something in both hands. It feels normal. Just make sure you use that strap around your wrist because if you drop it, take it back up. But then you have a wireless mic that you can connect to your boom that goes directly to that camera. And it's one of the best microphones. When you're flying, it's. It, I know that uh, Tucker got has some videos where he solders this in and does this and does that for a GoPro. This by far is the easiest, no soldering. And it's, you just hold in your hand, you put your uh, wireless on your mic and it sounds like, it sounds like this right here. Uh, I, I, th I throw it in my shirt pocket for lecture and I'm amazed at how good the audio is. So yeah, it, it beats my Canon DLSR. I mean, it's, or my D, my SLR. So I, it wins no matter what. What are you using for a mic, Sean? It, it's a, it's a it's a compatible thing for your for your pocket your DJI pocket. Um, yeah, okay. the creator so you, kit. Yeah, if you got the creator kit, it actually comes with it. Oh, okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Okay, right. Gotcha. And it charges USB C. So I mean, actually, you have a dual USB C. You plug it into one uh, USB, and it comes out with USB C and a USB C. So you plug it in to your pocket and your um, microphone at the same time. So it charges both at the same time. And then you just turn them on and they automatically connect. You it has a clip on, so you can clip it on your boom mic that you already have on your helmet or put it right there on your, on your shirt. I've done that before too. And mm -hmm. then you just take your camera and your throttle. And so when you take off, you have your throttle on one hand, you have your DJI on the other, your pocket on the other. And when you go fly around, you just turn it on and you just do all the fun stuff that you want to do. Talk about it. It turns around towards you, looks out that way. Uh, it runs 4K and it runs about two hours of one battery, which is probably longer than most people's flights. Is that on Amazon you get it? Where I'm, do you... I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, but you can go to DJI, they have it. They have the pockets and they have all sorts of different cams. I also run a 360 cam. I like the 360 because I can put it on my chest mount and have both my, you know, have my hands free like I normally would, you know, or, you know, carry that DJI have the 360, have a, a wing cam that's looking down and have a chase cam, man, he could do some serious filming. And if Will's talking with his mute on, we can't hear him. Yeah. Do they have a 360? You said that I know they have a 360 camera, but is it like something that would fit on like the Osmo, the, the, the gimbal type thing, or how does that work? Um, you know, the, I, you know, the, the, the answer 360, right? I got the Insta360. I also okay. have a GoPro 360, which I think is called the Max. I like okay. the Max. It's a little bit heavier, but the battery lasts longer, and you can change out the batteries in flight. So, how do you mount the if you really if you want? Because if you put it on your chest, you're not going to obviously you're not going to get 360 you, you know get coverage. So 360 around you, you can see around you. But right. where, could you mount it somewhere? I don't know anything about that camera. Is it like easily mountable? or helmet mount or what? When I fly, I personally don't want any snag hazards, you know? So putting anything on my helmet, I don't do. I have a chest mount that I put different things on. I do like to have my 360 on the uh, on the selfie stick. So I also take off like that. So I take off with my throttle in one hand and my, it, my uh, uh, selfie stick with the 360 on. Once I get up to altitude, I pull it out just like everybody else, they you know sit on one end, and now you got three sixty right in front of you. And it I runs mean, really good. well, the pocket's got a gimbal built into it, so when you're bouncing around, the camera stays steady. Yes. And if you want to, if you want to turn, but you know, you can hit the button, and the camera will flip back around and look at you. And then you can hit it again, and it'll flip back around to the front. It's not three sixty view, but mode. You can, yeah, it has a selfie mode, so you can switch it around, talk to the camera, then flip it back around to the front. You know pan whatever you want what's intriguing is the uh the wireless mic you know so is it the 360 is that the wireless mic available for it too on the dji 
I don't know that you're supposed to be able to hook AirPods to them, but I've not had a lot of success with that. Um, they AirPods do to what? what to the to what um to the pocket. It has a Bluetooth connection thing where you can make them connect, but it's never worked that that good. Hmm. Um, maybe since the firmware update, it has. I need to try it again and see if it works. But I got a Wi-Fi adapter I can hook in the bottom also. Um, I got the older pocket. I don't got the newer pocket like right. they do. But uh, And so it'll hook Wi-Fi also. I know it sucks. Every year they come up with something new, bigger, better, cheaper. And you're like, why do I? I got the original Osmo, the big one like, you know, like this. And the amazing, amazing video. Um, but it's a lot bigger. The pocket is just so nice. It just fits in your pocket. Um, was there a question that popped up? There's a ton of them. <laughs> okay, let's go, ahead and start, let's go ahead and start going through the, the questions real quick. I guess we'll start with the, the one that uh, Tony just asked, but he said it's a stupid question, but why don't they use tennis string for netting? That's, you know, that's, I mean, they, they, they've used all kinds of things for netting, Tony, including- Yeah, they the, use uh, Kevlar <laughs> for sure. I mean, yeah, a lot the, of the a lot of the netting is Kevlar, so it's pretty strong. I'm <laughs> kind of thinking my old DK Whisper was pretty much pretty much tennis string. I mean, old school. Yeah. Um, obviously, the <clears throat> Skytap Angel has the uh, really uh, strong. It's like 500 test pound on the Angel, and um, we also got a Nirvana, and their um, their string, their netting. Is really solid too but their holes are a little bit bigger um i don't know about any other ones that are really really strong they're mostly like fishnet i think that's what he's talking about right the difference between the fishnet and the strong tennis racket type of thing yeah yeah i mean i've, I've seen quite a few things used for uh for netting and especially in a pinch but yeah, uh, oh also real quick i want to shout out to boogie nights that's listening to our audio stream and Nay, N E G I N, Negan, and uh, Negan. So we got Negan, Boogie Nights, Pocket <laughs> Parley, Mirror Bear, Pac Man, Passive J are all listening on our audio stream on um, Podbean. So welcome, guys. Cool. Thank you. I like the Mac fly frame for as far as netting goes because it has little hoops all around the, the actual ring. You can string your own line through it. So as long as you know how to do the design, you can put whatever kind of string you want on the MacFly frame. I don't know what other ones do that, but I know on the MacFly, it's got just little hoops where you run your string through it instead of them being riveted in. That way, when they get knocked out, you either got to re-rivet it or figure out something else. Yeah. Well, we I'm just appreciative that. that my net's cheap. What, what was that? I'm, I'm appreciative my net's cheap. So you don't have to worry about, you know, it's 80 bucks for a net. It's not a big deal. Yeah, that's nice. James was, we were talking about it in the chat and I, I've had a Parajet before and my main gripe and the only gripe that I've had with the Parajet is how expensive that freaking netting is. I, I, I've heard that. <laughs> I mean, it's freaking expensive. Uh, just, I, I have no idea how much are nets usually there. Is that 400 bucks about for? I think it was, no, it's closer to 500, I think, with shipping and all that. Um, it's about it's all built into the, you know, that hoop that goes around it. That So oh, it snaps in, that's right. Uh-huh. So, um, uh, Paul Marzano, welcome, man. Uh, I guess, is that uh, Paul? Are you Tony's brother, by chance? But he wanted to know what frame, ra frame rate you could get on the DJI. And I know we talked about more than one DJI. It does slow-mo, right? Yeah, it'll do uh, 60 frames per second. Yeah. I think Unless you go down to 1080p, answer. then you can do 120 frames per second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was 240. At it, may, it may go up to 240. Yeah. I've never tried to run it that high, but yeah. I know yeah. some of their some of their new drones have uh 240. I don't know if their action camera does. I don't know. I usually don't run you're talking about um like for slow-mo or something or, yeah. or more frames mm -hmm. for, for yeah, the higher the higher the frame rate, the more uh the more you can slow it down and still keep uh smooth action. Yeah, um, I usually run it at 4K and whatever the 4K is, I think it's 60. 
frames a second and that's more than enough for what I need to do. It takes great uh, screenshots with that so I can screenshot, you know, some some good stuff. Um, I think I got a good screenshot when I was uh, foot dragging and a skunk popped up with his butt towards me and sprayed as I was going by. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so I got Ooh. a good screenshot of that one. <laughs> we gotta have we have to have Brooke come back on because you're you said screenshot and I almost forgot about the thumbnail tonight. Yeah, oh, yeah. and we've got questions for Brooke. Most of these questions are for Brooke. All right, I okay. Can answer these questions. Okay. Um, but oh, he is back. All right. See him. Yeah. Yeah, right. there he is. Oh, it's a shadow person. There oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a quick uh, screenshot, then we'll start asking questions. Sound good? Yeah. And here it is, almost nine o'clock. Wow. This is just boom, boom, boom. I love it. All right. Cheeseburger. All right. Paramotor. Trike. Right. Okay, I'm going to count three. You ready? One, two, three. Got it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know if you've run into this problem, Sean, but when I was training down one. there with Kylo, um, I was kiting my wing, and then we he had another student kiting in another part of the field. And you know, he told me to build a wall, and then I, I, I made the wall and I had it like floating like two feet off the ground, and he walked away like I ain't got nothing more to teach you. And then a cotton mouth was laying on the ground and freaking snapped at him he jumped in the air and i'm like what the hell's going on i had to hurry up and put my wing down he's like it's a snake i'm like you're kidding me dude because i'm not used to seeing stuff like that and there was a freaking <laughs> cotton mouth laying on the ground he's like i'm gonna have to start checking the field now before we go kiting like, That's there you go. why you wear boots out in the field you know <laughs> yeah i mean you know out in the field there's ticks there's bugs, you know, it come uh, late at night. All the, I, I mean, mosquitoes this big come out. I mean, I don't know why in the world that. Oh, in, in Florida, here. they do. It's nasty. Uh, you guys are listening to our audio stream. Um, we only get a limit of 120 minutes, so you're going to be kicked off in about two minutes. So please go to iFlyParamotors.com and you'll be able to watch the rest of the show. iFlyParamotors.com and then just look for the current uh, live stream. And we'll see you there. All right. I hate that we only have 120 minutes. Uh, Jim stream. has arrived at Salton Sea. Excellent. Hallelujah. Oh, Yay. good. Wow. That's that was a, a long. Yeah. From Canada all the way down there, man. That's just like way too long wow. to be I driving. Hope he gets <laughs> lots of video. I hope his paramotor works. I get. I hope that he flies a lot. I hope he has a blast. <laughs> Brooke, I'm ready for you, man. <laughs> I hope he's got spare exhaust boats because the last flying I went to, the guy was like, I got every freaking spare part except exhaust bolts. And oh. that's what fell off. Uh, <laughs> exhaust so, bolts? Like yeah, the ones he, that... he landed and said, I lost my nuts. We we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hate when I lose my While nuts. we're waiting for Brooke. Yeah, Bobby France asked if there was a uh, <laughs> that there was a fly-in, a new fly-in in June, and yes, there is. It's called Fly It for Gage 2023. It's in uh, Hardy Lakes Park, and that's in Bowling Green, Florida. And uh, this place is the neatest, biggest, best PG PPG place that I've ever flown out of. Absolutely amazing how big it is, and plenty to do during the day and. Uh, it's already uh, just looking at the page here, 70 interested, and we just, you know, put it up. So all the proceeds are going to uh, I uh, uh, charity. So, um, yeah. That's Check awesome. That. I'll be, yeah. unfortunately, I'll be on a cruise during that time. There will be, this is just the first annual. So there'll be one next year too. I will definitely try yeah. my best to get to it. All right, Brooke, you ready, man? You're Brooke, on mute. Brooke, you're on mute. There you go. What are we doing? I can't believe you'd be on mute like that. We're going to ask you a ton of questions because apparently there's a ton of questions in the super chat that we haven't got to yet. I oh, think okay. I think they'll go pretty quick. So A-Line wants to know, Brooke, what's your go-to single seat trike? Oh, the Vertigo. The Vertigo. Fly Products Vertigo. Um, whether Moster 185 or a Cosmos 300, those would be my go-to's i have it with the moster 185 
I cool. like the Vertigo because it has a low center of gravity, wide wheelbase, comfortable seat, rear protection cage. All the pieces are modular, break apart easy. It can also be repaired easily, and all the repair schematics are online. You order a part that's broken, it's there at your house from Italy in six days. And okay. What'd you say? What'd you say it was, Brooke? The, what's that? What'd you say it was, Brooke? I'm going to write it down. The Vertigo. Basically, anything from Fly Products can be had in just a matter of days if you put your order in quickly. I've heard that Fly Products is the way to go when it comes to getting trikes. I've, I've heard that from numerous people. They have an amazing trike lineup. The trike lineup is well thought out. They each complement each other in the lineup. They've been making trikes for 20 plus years. Everything online is very clear. All the manuals, all the schematics, uh, the customer support. And like you said, if you, you know, one up is great to work with and they are the fly products importers. Um, I love those trikes. What, I love my vertigo. What do you think about the Foxy trike? Cause that's the one that's supposed to go with my paramotor. I'm just wondering. Cause I, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to have the equivalent of the retractor, you want a simple light trike to mount oh, on right. your foot launch paramotor, it works perfect. Yeah. I was just, wor I was worried that it was going to have a small wheelbase and be easy to tip over. I mean, I, I would argue that almost any of those designs are kind of similar to that. Yeah. Um, it's going to come down to pilot skill. If you're using one of those light trikes, you need a little bit more of a skill set anyway. It doesn't have that built-in wider wheelbase or weight. But uh, no, I'd say it's on par for, for all the ones that are out there. Okay. Cool. James wants to know, what's Brooks' current foot launch unit? I fly a Parajet Maverick. Um, I'll be upgrading to the Mav Max pretty soon. Um, and I fly a 19 meter free ride and I just upgraded to a 19 meter free ride too. That's the big, that's the one with the bigger hoop, isn't it? The, uh, the new Parajet. Well, the free ride's my wing. Um, the Mav Max is the, yeah, yeah the new, um, Parajet Maverick, the larger version with the 140 prop and the 2.87 reduction. Um, and I guess I think it's worth mentioning that, um, I don't know if anyone saw Chris Santa Croce's video that came out in the last two weeks where he addresses the current trend of all of us flying tiny wings and big motors. But um, if you watch that video, he talks to about how, you know, we're not getting any older. We're not getting any younger, excuse me. And our bodies are taking the toll of all this small wing, big motor stuff. That's another reason I fly trike. I get to log hours and hours and hours with no stress to my back, no stress to my feet, no stress to my ankles or my knees. And so, Don't remind if, me, damn it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to fly hundreds of hours a year and you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you're eventually going to have to have some wheels somewhere. It's always fun to, to have a, you know, a, a light track that you can bolt on your wheel launch. I mean, you know, I think the, the, the biggest problem or the hardest thing for people to do when they get into the sport is to do uh, nil wind forward inflations and that seems to be the hardest thing that people do so during those times early in the morning you know get your wheels out there go launch and have fun in the evening or when they have a nice six seven eight mile an hour wind do those reverses turn around gun it take two steps and you're doing an elevator up in the air so i mean it's great when you have the wind to do foot launch or yeah foot launch and when you don't have the wind do the bolt-on light trikes so that's that's the whole thing that foxy trike is twenty five hundred dollars the kangook trike is like twelve hundred dollars yes oh just get whatever's simple and affordable there's not a huge difference between any of them mm. they can all be flown safely as long as it can match up on your trike, I would just get whatever you can afford. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got uh, Jeremy says, what does Jeremy say? He says, one up adventure has to be the best trike classes in the USA. Is that right? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> All right. So Brian Tuffer says, can you land on your feet with the retracta trike or with the retractable? So, so for the record, I have seen that done. I've done will it. I do it. I will not do it. But um, it's that that bar when it goes under your seat goes down at an angle. 
And when he landed, he landed on his feet, but he dragged that bar behind him. So I, uh, not good for you if you pulled it off. That looked way too sketchy for me. Oh, Sean said okay. he's going to do it. I, I, haven't, I haven't done it on the tractor trike, but I've done it on other light trikes. Okay. Good for that. That's, that's, that's pretty BA because that looked really sketchy. But the thing is, though, when you have the wheels, that's the fun part, you know, because you're 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 three wheeling on the ground, and all of a sudden your three wheeler takes off in the air. It's like amazing. It's like your evil Knievel, you know, uh, on a motorcycle, and then all of a sudden you're going to go up and over the uh, the Grand Canyon type of thing. You can do that with these trikes. It's just so uh, so amazing. But on the same note, you can pull in your brakes. Or you're pulling your trims you can do a wrap when you come in you just come in right and then you can pull all the way down with that wrap and you can just set it down right on the wheels or if you can stand up if you want to and stand up and, and drop it it's it's pretty fun but i wouldn't do that if you're a brand new track person though. 29 more questions brooke you ready 49 yeah. <laughs> no man that was it we're, i think we're <laughs> <not up. laughs> Oh my goodness, so much fun. I really love this. Well, guys, um, do we want to continue to talk or are we good for the night? I've got to head out. I got to eat some dinner. Oh, I'm wrapped up for the evening. Yeah. Thanks again, Brooke, for letting me know that I'm not going to die on my wing. I was really worried about that weight thing. You're I mean, good, I. Man. I, I I don't know why I didn't even think about looking at the placard on the damn wing. I'm looking all over the websites and all of them said the same damn thing. And then the placard's like, nope, you can carry a lot more weight than that. So that makes me feel better. There well, good. Go. I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. We appreciate you tonight taking the time to hang with us. I learned yes, a lot. Yes, it's been fun. And and thank you, you again. And and thank you for um uh, uh the the uh, the gift to Derek Trout for a trike uh a, a trike <laughs> trip a trike trip. Trike <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Excellent. There you go. Oh, yeah, Bruce, I'm coming over to fly with you one of these days. Yes. Will, I heard we're having our own private pilot mountain fly in coming up. Yeah. Again. I heard we didn't get invited to a certain one. Yeah, so that's, all right. throw our own. yeah that's all right. That's all right. I'm cool with Did that. Did you see Will's new hotel on wheels that he's got? I heard about it. I haven't seen it personally. Oh, he's got a video. You got to go watch it, man. He has decked that thing out. It's yeah. like, we well, got yeah. a van. Yeah. Yep, and it's, it's got his Will Fly logo on the side. It, it's oh, yeah. nice. Doesn't it have a, doesn't it? Did I hear it has like a disco ball inside it? <laughs> oh, it's got Maybe. the ice cream music to attract the children. <laughs> yeah, he'll be trying to get me inside that the next morning. So if you want, I probably have a couple don't laugh your daughter may be in here stickers. So <laughs> if you want one, I'll talk. Come to the man van. Yeah, girls. Come oh, on over here. Goodness. That is so funny. Well, guys, I had another amazing, wonderful time talking with you guys. Brooke, I know that you got to go, so we'll wave you off first. Have a great one. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much. Uh, real quick, how do we get up with you if we want to go over to your school and learn how to fly or trike? Uh, yeah, just check us out at PinnacleParamotor.com or Pinnacle Paramotor on Facebook. Um, and you can also check out Mark and Elena Honeycutt on YouTube. They've got a great YouTube following and a bunch of videos that show a lot about what we do awesome. and a lot of stuff that Mark and Elena do on their adventures. So, yeah, check us out there. Excellent. Yep. Thank you so They're much. Cool. Have a good one, buddy. Cool. Hey, Peace. Well, also, Doug Martin, I think he said that he's got to go, too, so we're going to wave him off real quick. Thank you for joining us, Doug. Um, Thanks, you've Doug. been on our show like a couple of three years in a row or something? Yeah, just yeah. about. And this this semester i have the greatest teaching semester ever so maybe i'll have more time That'll oh cool. good 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 you're That's more awesome, than welcome to, to join us anytime that you want to my friend yeah well thank I'm you happy you're doing that. good I'm yeah happy. Thank thanks for joining us thank you yep. thanks doug later on buddy well um it leaves us with uh our normal uh panel right here so let's go ahead and wave everybody off on our normal panel i guess we'll start with scuba steve yo yo all right <laughs>
you can reach me at paramotordude.com. <laughs> or, uh, you know, uh, if you look up Scuba Vapes on, um, on YouTube, you can find me there. I do a show every Friday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. And I, but I mix between vaping and PPG flying. So it's kind of weird. I just go with whatever's <laughs> on my mind at the moment, I guess. It was fun. I I, I joined you last uh, Friday. Yeah, I, I believe all of the paramotor people that were on your podcast. There, you know, I and I, I got to thank everybody, Angela and Bill and uh, Wayne, all, all kinds of people. Will, yeah, Will Fly was in there too. Um, it, I was like, damn, Linda comes in there. I, <laughs> I, I can't, you know, it's like, wow, I didn't really expect y'all to come, but I, I do appreciate it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm finally remembering your shows on Friday night. So, you know, Jade reminded me one night. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And now now I watch it every Friday. You got to hit that bell notification, you know, that way you know that you're going to be, uh, you know, notified when he goes live. That's, that's the only reason why I knew is like you, it popped up, you know. Um, Tony, you too. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've, I've been doing that show for, God, 10, well, YouTube, I've only been doing about 10 years, but I've been casting, only. I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been casting like 12, 12 years, I Dang. think. I don't know. Yeah. You're like a veteran at this now, well, man. I mean, I used to do it like twice a week, but it gets really taxing, you know, trying to do stuff <laughs> twice a week. And before it was just vaping stuff. And, you know, you run out of stuff to say. And then most of the people that come in are people that already know everything about it so it's like you're preaching to the choir so what do you do you you, you start doing paramotor so you can talk about new stuff <laughs> <laughs> that's there right it never gets old there you go well thank you very much mr scuba steve uh, we definitely appreciate you and thank you for uh, sharing your podcast on fridays with us no problem we also got Ryan Rides that we want to be on the show again. So, Linda, get up with Ryan because we want to uh, uh, do another podcast with him because he – well, actually, tell us about all the different drones and what they can do because it's hard for me to explain since you do it professionally. Sure. Um, so what I do is um, – well, I am the general manager and chief pilot for a uh, drone light show company called uh, Starflight Drone Shows. Um, we right, we currently have a fleet of 75 drones that we fly. Um, and we, I, I design some of the shows. We have another designer that does design some of the shows. He does a lot of the 3d stuff. I'll do the 2d stuff. And, uh, you know, we go out to people's parties or special events and we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll customize a show to kind of fit the um the parameters of what they're looking to have uh put How up in the, the sky hell do you have that many battery chargers that's all i'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> i know right wow it's it's done in banks we have banks that do 10 batteries at a shot so it, it it takes a little while it's it's a full day's job to to charge up the fleet for sure because you this... figure we we have at least uh two batteries for every drone that we own so it's a lot of batteries. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this something that you could do maybe for like um, a flying that we go to? You could do something at night since we can't fly at night. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's something we could do. Excellent. That sounds like a plan. So, yeah, we want to get you back on so you can talk mm -hmm. more about. You know, there is a flying coming up in June. Will. <clears throat> Just flying saying. coming up in June. That's there right. There you go. You could have a drone light show, man. Get some more people. Let me know. I'd love to book it. There's an idea. Hey, cool. That would be totally cool. I'm down. Hey, if I can fly during the day and then uh, come down and do a drone show for everybody, I think that would be fantastic. That would be that's my jam right there. There you go. <laughs> I, I I have never seen I have never seen that ever. Can I tell you a little secret? Yeah. Up until I've done I did this. I started doing this. I had never seen a drone show in person. Really. Hmm. And to this day, I still have not seen one that I've been able to enjoy because oh, I'm always, yeah. my face is in the computer the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I watched the one in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and it was kind of funny. It was like when they were first starting to do this stuff. And you could see the couple of drones that I guess went out of battery power and they just kind of went off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was pretty funny to watch. It was great, though. It is something to see for sure. 
I've seen them on the internet. I watched them and they are just absolutely fantastic. I can't imagine watching it out there in real life. It's like, it's like I've seen the Northern Lights on TV, mm-hmm. but I've never seen them in real life. I can't imagine what they really look like. It's almost like watching, you know, a pair of motor videos. Right. But until you go up there and look around, the videos do absolutely nothing for what you actually feel, see, and experience absolutely. up there. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, it's uh, the the biggest rush for me. Uh, it sounds so cheesy uh, being a professional pilot, but getting that first drone off the ground, because my first flight was with one drone um, and then I got it up to two and then we did six. And that was just such a rush because it was all starting to come together. It took me after we got the drones, it took us six months to get them. Uh, but after we it took me another about three weeks to actually get the entire fleet off the ground. Wow. How big are 75. Uh, the ones that, that we fly are, um, yeah, they're about the size of a Mavic mini. Really? Yeah. Wow. They're tiny. Uh, the reason that we got the, these is because you can fit 10 in a case. So when you start getting into the, the hundreds of drones or even the thousands of drones, you're dealing with a much, much smaller number of cases. And it's because of the size, they're just much easier to transport. That makes sense. I couldn't imagine doing a thousand drones. <laughs> Dang. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the day to, to get a thousand of them off the ground. It's, it's going to be a huge jump, but I'm looking forward to it. Wow. Well, I have not even seen it on TV or on online. I've never, I've never even heard of it. So I'm going to, there wait. was, so will do me a favor when we, when we're done, go on to YouTube and um, look up uh, Philadelphia Eagles drone show. It Ooh, happened. Write this down. It happened last weekend. It was done by a company called verge arrow. They're actually one of the, the originators of drone shows. Okay. Um, and v- they did a phenomenal is that, job. Is that V E R G A E R O? Or is it sounds it right? Arrow, yeah. Or is it arrow like a arrow? No, it's a uh, A E R O. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they're uh they're a company that's based out of uh, Philadelphia, I believe, and they've done a few a few shows. Uh, they did one during COVID, which really uh skyrocketed them into uh popularity and that's when people really went started going nuts for them so so you but yeah uh right now all of my drones are down in florida with the boss man so i've got uh, uh right now i'm just out selling and trying to book shows so if you guys want a show let me know i'd be happy to to book it and and come out and do it for you wow um, cool so curious. you could come out for my birthday. Curious. Yeah. What, Start what, doing it like at Lake off of Lake Michigan, you know. And yeah. So, Here you so go, curious, Linda. On about, you know, what do your packages cost to have someone come out? I mean, is it per minute that you do it, per drone, or how does that work as far as uh, booking? It it's broken down. Uh, we we've we've broken it down into to try and simplify it for people because different companies uh, price things different ways. Right. Uh, we've broken it down into two simple packages: a 50 drone show or a 75 drone show, oh. um, and they range anywhere from 10 to 15 thousand. Okay. So, and um, we can we can customize them. We can do 3d animation 3d graphics all sort. we can do all sorts of cool stuff the the designer that that i'm working with the the man is amazing with all of the the ideas that he's been coming up with so uh because of the limited number that we have we have to be very creative in how we do things and uh, it's very much part of the process is is finding creative ways around the limitations that we're we're dealing with so it's fun it's a lot of fun yeah. Sure. So, Linda, rebook him. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm typing everything in right now. Right. I'll uh, I'll try and get some video to you guys so that we can share it when uh, when I do the 
the podcast for sure. Oh yeah, please do. Absolutely. And how long do the shows usually last? Is it like a five minute show, a 30 minute show, an hour show? What is that? Usually? Well, it depends on what we're, it depends on, on the, the gig that we're booking. Um, for like right now we're we've got wedding packages uh the wedding packages are about eight minutes five to eight minutes um a full show will be 10 between 10 12 15 minutes we max out at about 15 minutes because simply because of battery life um the drones can fly for upwards of 20 minutes um but when you start having them flying around and moving it eats up a lot more battery so plus the that's stuff that we stuff. yeah the it it it's uh there's a lot of things that you have to calculate and figure out that's really interesting this is gonna that'll be a really good podcast well thank you again ryan we definitely appreciate you we also got thanks for having me yeah anytime just come back anytime anytime yeah i will definitely. i will be back next week you've got one of my hey. uh my heroes coming on next week oh, All right, okay. mike potter yes good 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 I figured that yeah. you would. <laughs> That's going to be a fun show. That's going to be fun. All right. We also got Will Fly from Will Fly PPG. Um, he also does uh, amazing videos on his uh, channel. So tell us about your channel and tell us about the podcast that goes on on Tuesday nights. Yeah, so uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just search for Will Fly or uh, willflyppg.com. I'll take you to the same place. Um, just released just the tip 6.0 and 7.0 is going to be out next week sometime i keep saying next week but these things take time <laughs> so hey also too real quick um to remind uh, to remind you when you do these videos can you post them in our guest chat oh yeah sure post post a link because i sometimes don't get to 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 you know search around youtube and go to all my favorite places anymore because i'm you know training or i'm gonna i'm i just don't have time anymore i get so it man. post you, that you either create videos or you watch videos but it's very hard to do both you know yeah. you know i mean sure. it's just uh, just hard but um so so yeah you can check that out also tomorrow night 8 p.m eastern on youtube uh, we do a show called Paramotor Hangout with Shane and Mark McElroy and myself. Uh, get together, we talk uh, we talk paramotors or whatever else comes up. You know, it's just kind of sitting around a campfire like you're at a fly-in and uh, just shooting the breeze. Uh, there you can you find go. at ppgshane.com. That'll take you Excellent. right. Excellent. Shaney. Excellent. Shane. Shane. And of course, Linda Anderson, our PR girl, the person that you need to talk to if you want to be on the show. Actually, yes. Ryan, Ryan, how do you get up with Linda? You go to paramomusa.com. It forwards over to her Facebook page. You just PM her, say, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, and she'll hook you up. She also got a famous son that does another podcast on Thursday nights. Linda, take it away. Ah, oh, yes. Robert Michaels. Does a show on Thursday nights, paraglidingtalk.com. So I'm like the PR of his show because the Paramount's work is never done, you know. So um, I kind of help him out and he's real funny. I'll, I'll say, you know, I promise if you let me jump on the Zoom, I'll be good. And he <laughs> knows me better than that because most of the time, you know, most of the time he's like, all right, mom, I got to mute you. You're out of control. So, you know, but I, I just have to give a shout out to my chatters. Thank you so much for hanging with, hang with us tonight on the show. And I so much appreciate all of you. And I'm looking forward to next week, just calling out all the names and saying hi to everybody. Yeah, that'd so, be really, so your, really your, cool. um, your job now is to shake pom poms and shout out names. And uh, say, speaking, do speaking shout about, outs. That's right. Speaking about yeah. shouting out, um, nope. Tony Marzano. This um, I think it was Tony Marzano. Tony Marzano, you, you're the one that does the um, trikes or the, um, the um, oh shoot, what was it? The tandems. I think that we tried to get up with you for that guy that has the end of life that has cancer and he's just a little bit too heavy. So shout out to, uh, to Tony for trying to help us out. We definitely appreciate you. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, cool. guys, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Will and Scuba Steve, Ryan. Paramom Linda Anderson, Brooke Sheffield, 
um doug thank you you guys and everybody else that's been listening i don't have the list of everybody but we appreciate you guys don't forget if you want to be randomly chosen to win something just go over to paramotorarkansas.com make a free account and don't forget your mailing address because if you don't have a mailing address i can't send nothing out to you so yeah. we'll, see, we'll see you guys tomorrow at uh, ppd shane uh wednesday at paramotor girl on thursday over at paragliding talk just want to fly oh. i'll say just want to fly for what on wednesdays wednesday still poor paramotorgirl.com oh that's her yeah that's her yeah okay but i do, i always just think it just want to fly you know yeah, like, it, she doesn't have a just want to fly.com so i i i, I yeah. can't really do that yet so i still want to get people to go oh, okay and gotcha. then over thursday you got paragliding talk dot com, dot com. and then right. on friday scuba steve <clears throat> on friday <clears throat> on friday <laughs> there we go let me unmute on friday it's scuba's hangout which has been scuba's hangout for god knows how long eight to ten o'clock eastern standard time just go to paramotordude.com that'll take you straight over to the channel paramotordude.com Paramotor all right guys thank you so much again i can't believe that we uh, talked for almost two and a half two hours. hours two and a half hours this is great this was fun unbelievable you guys are totally amazing. fun and uh next week who do we have linda anderson we have mike cotter to be our guest That's i know i he's such a busy guy too and i was so i was so excited you know i asked to be on the show because see now you know i'm a michigander and he's a michigander kind of thing i was like yeah it's pretty. Uh, I just thought it'd be super fun to get him on there. Oh, she so wish she was really... a Michigander too. I'm... Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Sounds there you... good. Well, you all fly safe, and we'll see you next week on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, Clear Prop TV, yeah. paratalk.org.